The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this black girl. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Harry Hands Hill, episode 112. I'm your hairy handed host, Gav, and here's another hairy hosted person. Who are you? I'm hairy palmed down. My palms are so hairy. They're so hairy from all the wanking you do. No, it's because I'm a werewolf. Oh, oh yeah. Got that wrong, didn't I? There we go. Hello. <laughs> Hello, it's my birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Yes, it yeah. is. Everybody, let's all join hands. Put Dan in the middle of the circle <laughs> and jump around and sing around him naked as we go, happy birthday, Daniel. Happy birthday. With Christopher Lee in a long wig, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, someone just bat doing a tambourine. I've got a tambourine over there, actually. I'm not going to stop bashing a tambourine. Then... The audience doesn't want to hear that. Hopefully Nicholas Cage just punching about three women out for no reason. I just hope he just turns up and just starts punching out people. Fucking amazing. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love him in that film. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how there we go. Are, how are you? And oh, oh, obviously, how are you, listeners? Uh, I hope the world is not too of a weird place out there for you, unless it's world of a strange later on. Um, but you're you're getting along and enjoying yourself, and we're here to entertain your holes in your head, aren't we, Dan? Yes, the ear holes he's referring to as we uh, as we fire birthday cannons of confetti and joy Ooh, into your into you. little ear holes. Take it, take it, take it, you swine. Not calling you oh guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Not calling you listeners swine, obviously. Well, I know it's my birthday, but this is crazy. Talk I know. Mom. I know. Uh, are you going to be getting drunk for the episode or I have to be the sober judge going, come on, stop it. No, no, I've be got a couple of beers Daniel. here. Be sensible, Daniel. Be sensible. Got a couple of beers here, but I'm not going to get too drunk uh, with work in the morning and all that business. But um, I'm really going to have stuff. a little drink and yes. celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, now, uh, it's your birthday episode. Uh, as everybody knows, we like to have a little themed thing. I choose a birthday. I, it's literally kind of my episode. I run it when it's Dan's birthday, vice versa. Daniel, Please, everybody knows because you've seen the pictures of, and the, read the text of what the episode is. But please, tell us about your birthday uh, choices. So I have decided to go with the first two VHS tapes I ever bought myself with my own little money. I was about probably about nine or ten years old and I wandered down to the corner shop with one of my parents and the X rentals for Teen Wolf from 1985 and Labyrinth from 1986 were there. And I could not resist those big giant boxes. Um, it was the old big box X rentals, you know the style, Gav. And Have you still got them? Still got them. They're in that cupboard right there. Amazing. Um, yeah, I've still got all of my VHS actually. I've got rid of all my DVDs. Pr- well, all but about 100 but I've kept almost all my VHS just because I'm not sure what to do with them really I've still got a VHS player and I do watch them occasionally but, uh, um, you gave me a VHS player didn't you? I did yeah I've recently uh, well I went to put in a tape I need to check another put a tape every time I put a tape in it spat it out again it would not keep uh, it in and I'm like no no that's um, quite an old one that I gave you as well so that might yeah, be well, the case it was a combi, wasn't it? But the DVD player yeah. bust on it. So, yeah, I don't know. But I've, I'm the same. I've got a load of VHS as well, and I, just, I kind of don't know what to do. With it. And possibly selling the house soon or at some point. So I kind of need to, you know, shift this stuff. But yeah. well, that's, that's the been. dilemma I've got. I thought about making a short film about VHS tape monster, then just pull out all the tape and put it as a costume. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, it'd be worth a laugh, wouldn't it? Well, I gave all my DVDs away to somebody on Facebook Marketplace who basically I knew that they were like, I'm a collector, I'll take these off you. So 
I was I was happy to give them away rather than sell them. I'd probably want to sell some of the VHS, but again, if somebody approached me who wanted to come to my front door and take the majority of them away, I'd happily let them have a lot of them. I, I want to downsize. I've got about 500. I'd probably like to get it down to about 100, really. You need a will, bit of space with the babies coming. That's what I was about to say. You will have a house full of uh, toy shit eventually. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so that's the theme of this episode. So mm. very strange Team Wolf with Michael J. Fox and David Bowie uh, and Jennifer Conley in uh, Jim Henson's Labyrinth. So lots to talk about. Both films and I have. I'd obviously... never seen it, had I, Labyrinth? You've never seen Labyrinth, which a lot of our um, Facebook followers were very shocked about. But if you just haven't seen something, you just haven't seen something. It does happen sometimes. <laughs> it happens a lot um, with me, though, because you do seem to... <laughs> make the joke have a shot each time I say I've not seen it you know, there's one. I've seen a fucking <laughs> fuck ton load of movies so it's really weird when I keep finding a fuck ton of load of movies I haven't seen it's but like this, why have I not seen this it? happens to me I only saw Train Spotting for the first time about five years ago you know um, it happens you, you miss the film you mm. never get around to picking it back up and, and with these two with Team Wolf and Labyrinth obviously they're films that I grew up as I bought them at the age of, sort of 9 or 10 yeah. I watched them religiously so and they have a, a meaning a special meaning to me both of them in various ways and I know a lot of people out there Labyrinth is in their top probably their top 3 yeah, if not it top seems 5 to everybody likes Labyrinth and it's obviously I didn't hate it but obviously you got to look it's at hard it coming in I'm a 44 year old man he doesn't really like exactly. fantasy um and I stay well away from musicals. I know it's not a musical, but there's some set song pieces. It is Bowie. The songs are, to me, a little bit, hmm, don't know. But, that, but I'm a four-year-old, four-year-old coming in at 2021 20, to this movie. Uh, so anyway, it'll be an interesting discussion, but I'm, I'm not going to be like everybody else going, ah, so, you know, so. But yeah, interesting discussion to have, though, you know. Definitely, and oh, don't worry, because I'll have a lot of passion, and no, I'll be well, more than happy it. to it's do your episode. Voices. I'm not just going to sit there and just go, right, yeah, Dan put me on mute and just like sit back, yeah, have a little imagine snooze, if, you know. Imagine if you made me cry on my birthday and said, look, Dan, this is the last episode, because I, I hate it. I take it anymore, so I can't much. take your birthday episodes anyway, that's it. Fuck You're, your you birthday can episodes, off. you can stick them up your fucking ass. <laughs> you fucking dickhead. <laughs> And there's no, of just not. 20 minutes of me crying it into is... the microphone, and that's the end of the episode. Wow. And I'd have to edit that as well. How horrible would I be to sit there and edit that? What an evil bastard I'd be. Here's Dan crying, <laughs> and there's a music outro. All right, let's burn it down. Can you send me the blurb, please, Dan? I blurbed all over on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you're dying to know what I did for my birthday. It was my second lockdown birthday, believe it or not. Strange because expression, isn't lockdown, it? Lockdown birthday. No, I'm dying to know. Like, how did that? Where does that come from? You're gagging to know. Oh. <laughs> you don't like that one? <laughs> gagging? Yeah. Are you gagging for it? Sounds a bit blowjobby, doesn't it? But I'm dying though. I'm dying to know about that. Oh, I'm like, what? I'm not actually dying though, yeah. are you? You know. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Somebody, one person once upon a time said that, and someone else went, oh, "That sounded pretty fucking cool." I'm gonna go and say, Look, "I'm dying to that." What do you mean dying to see? I'm fucking cool. It probably comes from, I'd do anything to know what happened, and then that changed to, and it referred to just to make I'd it easier die. to say, "I'm dying." Yeah, it was basically it's basically it's turned into a lazy one word, hasn't it? It's probably yeah. like a fucking sentence you had to like say out to it, but did you not hear? I'll say it again. And it got to the end of like, oh, I'm dying for that. Oh, I see it last better. That's easier. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, carry on. <laughs> My birthday, second lockdown birthday. Strange thing. Um, everyone's had a lockdown birthday by now. Um, but in the UK, my birthday was the day that all the pubs actually opened um, just with the gardens. However, they all had about a two week um, sort of waiting list. So I didn't bother doing any of that. That's so funny. I just... Being someone that doesn't drink now, I, I kind of sit on the other side a little bit and watch it and it's just so funny. You go, what the fuck, I want to drink. It's like, oh, calm down, calm yeah. down. It's very funny. I actually had my first pub experience this weekend. And you were Rose. extremely happy, weren't you? I was very happy, but then I wasn't because the roast was terrible. Oh, no. 
yeah, it was it was a shame. But oh, um, man, I enjoyed I having my first pulled pint in the sun. I hate, I hate a shit Sunday roast on a, a pub yeah. on a Sunday. When when you and then you it's uh, a pub where you're paying spending like fourteen, fifteen quid or something for a roast, and you just, just like and you get a load of shit and say, what the fuck? Seventeen quid I spent oh, on a beef my sirloin. God, are you fucking millionaires, are you? Terrible. Jesus. No, Christ. not at all. I just seventeen quid. I'd never pay fuck that. Make a better one I don't myself. know when the last time you went out, Gav, was because uh, it does cost quite a bit to go out and eat now. No, and but oh, no, it does. You're also in a city as well, so I think it might be a little bit more. Yeah, Bristol expensive. is almost London prices now. Yes, yeah, yeah. But no, I don't. I'd rather make a nice roast at home, to be honest with you. But what did I do on my birthday? So Alice had to work because she's wrapping up her, you know working work work worky works so i decided to i had a little bit of a lovely breakfast in the morning chilled out a little bit and then i decided to make my way for a couple of uh cool funky films so you were by yourself i was well i was in the same room as alice but i had my headphones oh on. she is working wasn't she but so you so you're nice so you yeah. like nice i'm gonna do some movies what did you do uh, so I watched. I just watched a bunch of like random films that I've been meaning to catch up on for ages. Things like I think I probably. I think I watched Phenomena um, for the second time ever because we reviewed that, and that was the first time both of us had seen no, that. No, no, no. Uh, do, 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 do. Phenomena. Da, 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 da. That's it. Um, yeah, I'm, and I had fun. I got lots of rum, so that's all sitting behind me. Um, I had three cakes randomly because my sister-in-law made me a lovely um, cake. Red velvet. Yes. You... My sister-in-law made me a red velvet cake. Eight, as well as being given free cakes. You ate free cakes. Are we talking about normal size cakes which can serve 12 people each? No, so Alice bought me a Colin the Caterpillar cake, which in the UK is a very well-known type of cake. Long, chocolatey, looks like a caterpillar. Oh, I didn't know that name, but yeah. Yeah, you know Colin the Caterpillar cake. Oh, uh, I would have seen it. I've probably not paid any attention. I didn't know it has name. He's all over the news at the moment, because Aldi are trying to are getting oh, really? sued by Mark Spencer's or something. Oh, really? no? I don't know. I don't take notice of caterpillar cakes. So, well... That's, that surprises me is you've got three children. Um, <laughs> I don't one of them would have three children this. either. <laughs> but I had a Colin the Caterpillar cake. Then I had a small little cake from Alice um, because she was worried that I wouldn't want to cut the big cake on my birthday. And then I had the she red velvet worried. cake. She was worried. She was worried yeah, because we you took the Colin. Cut a cake on your birthday. Why, why would she be worried that you wouldn't want to? Because. And we, why wouldn't we went, you want so to? We had a, because. Let me explain. <laughs> Because we went to my dad's a day before my birthday mm. on the Sunday to have a barbecue and she thought that the entire Colin the Caterpillar cake would probably get eaten because my brother and his wife were there as well. So between the five of us, we would eat that. There was a little bit left. So she'd actually bought a little cake so that I could actually blow a candle out on my actual birthday as well. Oh, oh very sweet. I but in the that. meantime, anyone who's listening to the first, anyone listen to the first guys, podcast first, I'm like, what are these guys talking about? Why are they talking about cake so much? But in the meantime, not having not liaised with my sister-in-law, she then, my sister-in-law, Jo, very kindly made me a red velvet cake, which, so, and I ended up with just lots of cake and lots of rum. That's what I'm saying. Any rum cake? No, but some rum chocolate. Yeah, there you go. Good. Rum chocolate. Well, I'm glad you had a nice time. What have you been watching, dear sir? Anything we can just speak of quickly? Um, well, I'm not going to talk about them in great detail, but I recently watched Escape from Witch Mountain and Return to Witch Mountain, the Disney 70s movies and that are on Disney Plus right now. Names that have always intrigued me, but never seen them probably put off because it said Disney, to be honest with you. But they've got Donald Pleasance, Christopher Lee and Betty Davis in it, as, as we've discussed off air. Incredible. However... If you want to know more about that, become a patron because our patrons are going to get a special review of both of those very soon. I might uh, from me. have to not listen to that then until I've watched the films, possibly. Yeah, I would say don't, Gav. Good, I won't. You, well, you've been watching a film series, haven't you? Talking about it's watching not a... horror-related in the slightest, but again, you said to me, oh, you've not seen any of them movies. You didn't. That's your impression. That's how I get. When you text me or anything like that, that's the voice I get from you. Uh, fuck. 
Don't forget, this is my birthday movies. episode. Uh, Be nice. <laughs> I, honestly, I won't make you cry on your birthday. All right, shh, shh, shh. Close those sweet I'm doing, lips. I'm even doing the. I'm putting a little. I'm, I'm putting my finger acting. to your mouth. Shh. As long as it's just your finger. <laughs> I've been watching, oh. not horror related at all. Well, actually, there is. One of the movies is directed by there James Wan yeah, yeah. later on, but I've not got to it yet. I've been watching the Fast and Furious movies because you're like, well, you've not seen your movies. See, I did it different that time. I didn't say that. You did. I've not seen your movies. I didn't say that. What did you I didn't say? say that. What did you say? I said to you, I said to you, I put up the, the trailer for the ninth, which is probably the tenth one, because if you include the spin-off, and you said, I've never seen a single one of these. And I said, Really? You, and you said something like, I just don't have... You said something along the lines of, I just don't get a chance to watch anything recent. And I said, no. this franchise is almost 20 years old. No, I, no, I don't know. I, no, I wouldn't have said that. That was probably, that's probably another movie I hadn't watched and I was trying to <laughs> excuse myself from. Uh, anyway, so I've been watching... It doesn't watching, matter if you have not seen I've been watching the movies and it's a really random season. I only talk a uh, series. I talk about it very briefly because there's good people out there who don't want to hear about movies of cars or I don't know. But because um, I like action films and um, it's really odd. The first movie is quite a good movie and it's got your kind of undercover cop and there's some car things going on and it's kind of just like that story. Set alone, if that was just the only movie... It's a fairly decent movie. Part two is a load of shit. Yeah. Part three is really weird and just like that makes no sense. But most of the movies start. It's got that got that hillbilly the common in sense, the third one, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is just like a really weird guy. And it's like who, why, what? Um. Anyway, then part four starts to go quite good, and it's just like at what point in a movie series does part four become start begin the flagship of making a good lot? Then I watched part five last night, and I was like, oh my god, the the blatant disregard to the safety of the pedestrians when they they pulling a <laughs> fucking tanker like bank tanker safe they've pulled out of the fucking a safe basically he pulled it out and they're pulling it down the road destroying everything killing probably many 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 people and i was just like what the hell but totally enjoyed it totally enjoyed it it's absolutely dumb as fuck but i totally enjoyed it and i can't wait to watch part six in set in london these these, these films are what the late last couple of diehard movies really wanted to be i feel like these take but, it further it's just like what is going yeah. on they're so dumb and they're like video games but you don't really care you kind of and again they're also like the logics the ridiculous. transformers could have been this but the transformers were too silly this is just yeah. this is the right level of dumb it's yeah, you just literally put your brain to the side, but then you watch the action pieces, and it's like, wow, that's amazing, you know. So um, this, what I'd said here, dear listeners, obviously it got under Gav's skin or wheedled into his ear because um, he, after we recorded and I and we talked, and I said, oh, I'm shocked you haven't seen any of them. There's a whole bunch of them out there. He then sent me a picture of the Fast and the Furious. Well, said, shops opened up in England. Up. Lockdown uh, said, eased, so yeah. I said, "Oh, nice one, dude. Um, that's the fifth one, or whatever it is, the fourth one." And you were like, "Oh, where the fuck have they done this?" Yeah, and I was like, Look, "Don't worry Furious. about it." So I was just like, "What?" Yeah. But you can tell now why, because two and three are shit. So they were kind of starting again with just calling it yeah. Fast and Furious, but it confused so me. You, yeah. But then that put you on a mission because the next thing you know, you went to a car boot sale and you picked up like one, two, three, five, six, and seven. And then I said to you, brilliant, dude. All you need to know is get Hobbs and Shaw and the eighth one. And you were like, I've got them already. I no. don't know how you suddenly got them all. No, I ha- so quickly. No, I haven't got those end ones, but I have got, I've got one, two, three, four. I even got four twice for some reason. One, no, three twice. <laughs> one, two. You love it so much. <laughs> I got another <laughs> copy. I gave it to Sarah's kid. One, two, he loved it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've got. Nice, and I picked him up because I went to a shop the next day as well because England eased its lockdown a bit. So, yeah, I went to a car boot and I've been to a car boot in ages uh, outside of England. Everybody have talked about this before. Uh, 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 English, it's like a swap meet or uh, people just sell stuff and you can go and it's in the field. And it was heaving and I got, yeah, I got uh, loads of movies. Just, uh, yeah, Sarah would be like, me and Sarah go along, we'd just go through all the movies. It's quite, sometimes I have to like get there before her and nudge her out the way up while she gets good horror movies. It's quite funny. Um, so as we're going through, she'd be like, hey, "Have you got part six? Oh no, no, it's part six. And just kept doing this and just finding them all. It was great. My my actual favourite is, um, and I've watched it with my dad and my brother so many times. It's the spin-off Hobson Shaw yeah, with I the Rock that, and yeah. Jason Statham. 
teaming up. It's so fucking good. And it's like, they hate each other so much. But if you ever wanted to see a film where The Rock and Jason Statham take on, um, uh, what's his name? Um, well, I can't remember his name now. Uh, shit. D- what's Luther's real name? The detective. Idris Elba. Oh. He's the baddie. Oh, really? Yeah. Helen Mirren. They're all in it. It's fucking brilliant. It's such a random... It's great. It's so weird. But yeah, anyway. So I, I banged out a load of those. I've been totally enjoying them. But not horror. Um, I did watch Crawled again the other night. The uh, alligator film. Yeah. Fucking loved it again. Watched it for a second yeah, time. I've fucking only great. seen it the once. I really, really, really enjoyed it the first I, time I saw it. I felt it was basically got a game the same feeling I get from uh, uh, Jaws a little bit. Not, not in, in ah. a smaller scale, but I like the whole like stuck there, the water's coming in. And I watched it with Jay, and Jay was just like the whole time going, <laughs> jumping around when she was trying to get away from the alligators. So Jay was like really in there, and it really done everything it's supposed to emotionally to someone who's not seen it especially like jay she's come up to 14 uh, it was really enjoyable to watch again and definitely recommend that film there's a couple of um scenes in it that you, i didn't expect with regards to gore um so yeah i really yeah. enjoyed that movie yeah. and we're talking about double bill in that aren't we with the pool the thai movie the yeah, pool and i've not seen that so um yeah i'll, I'll wait till we do that to watch that I watched a film which I've heard so much about. It's a cult film, uh, and it's on YouTube. Uh, and I thought, oh, I went to bed really early, and I thought, well, I'll just watch this in bed. And that's Killdozer. Okay. Uh, a lot of people have heard of this. Um, heard, probably no. never seen it. No. It's 1974 TV movie. Really, okay. really, really enjoyable. And I didn't expect that. And I do like a shit film. But yes, this is yes, above a shit film. Oh, good. This is above a shit film. Yeah, it's a group of guys working off the coast in Africa, um, like a bunch of American construction guys, and they basically uncover a meteorite that has like a weird glow that then leaps into one of the bulldozers, and the bulldozer just like starts hunting them. It's a bit like Stephen King, uh, Stephen Spielberg's Duel, that kind of a film. Good it's just this uncontrollable How did you force. Choose watching that. What, what point made you? Because it's on YouTube. It's not like it's on Netflix in front of your face. It's in YouTube. The vastness of YouTube. What, what made you watch it? I've got a list, um, on my watch list, and it was the next one on my where watch list, this, and I knew it was on YouTube because I researched it. Where did this list come from? Uh, just different uh, I've got, sources here and there saying, oh, you should watch this movie, and you just jot them down, do you? I've got six lists that I work through, and I alternate. I go through each of them in order. So I've got I've got Disney+, Plus, Prime, um, Netflix, my TiVo, uh, films that I've stored on my laptop, and my final list is recommended slash a, a pad of paper that I've got. So anytime I hear someone talk about something on a podcast, that's what I'm uh, saying. I write it down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this was from that list. Okay. Cool. And, and you it, recommend it? Came it? up. I recommend it. Kill those on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you've been up to, or should we get into the show? Uh, well, you wanted to talk about one little comedy film that you've been you'd watched oh, recently oh I did watch again I introduced Sarah to uh, which is on Disney's channel it's on the uh, what star thing they've got on their channel um, Club Dread I, I I love Club Dread and haven't seen it for years it was my movie I'd watched to sort of fall asleep to and um, loved it uh, again and it was just as funny it was so so good um, yeah that's it really there's not much more to do. if you've I've not seen it watch the movie it's so enjoyable I've seen it a couple of times um, I watched it and didn't remember enjoying it very much but then I remember you recommending it again to me about five years ago so I watched it again and I thought actually this is really good really oh, fun oh good I'm glad um, I, I, again this time around there's other jokes there I'm really laughing quite a lot all the way through the jokes are actually pretty decent and not over the top but it's quite really well played you also watched Super Troopers, you said, as By well. By the same people, and I didn't find that that funny like I didn't the first time either. There's a couple of gags which are all right. The speed gun while he's having a wank is kind of comical. But it actually, when it comes down to the story and everything, it's not good. The other one is a murder mystery set on an island, and they're stuck on the island with no boats. It's fucking brilliant. I, when I was in, well, when I was, I, I live in Bristol. Many years ago when Super Troopers came out, I walked through one of the shopping centres, and there was an American state trooper car in the middle of the shopping centre, and they were doing a promotion for it. And it's really weird. And some of the actual actors were there handing out tickets to go see it that night at the cinema. So, so my funny. girlfriend and me at the time went along to watch it. And that was, 
we really enjoyed it but i think that was because it was free we'd met some of the actors yeah uh, in cinema uh, I've, most I have, people laughing i've watched it since and it, i still find it funny but only really that one scene where he's sort of doing that different word i can't remember which word it is he says differently at the car but he keeps saying one word differently uh, meow or something or oh yeah no he's saying meow and he's when he's pulled someone over it's not that funny movie um but club dread i recommend wholeheartedly if you've not seen that movie you want something funny and you've got fingmajiggy in it haven't you he's passed away now old bill uh pullman paxton paxton not pullman that's the other one yeah bill paxton um, so he's he's fucking hilarious as Coconut Joe, Coconut, <laughs> Coconut Joe, Coconut Pete, Coconut Pete. Actually, I just remembered I watched I, one more film. I did watch this last night. Mm-hmm. Red Sonia. Where, I, that's I the one where Arnie Arnie uh, had an affair with a uh, thing with Jiggy, but still married his wife anyway. Bridget. She still thought that's all right. Don't worry about it. I'll marry you, which I was kind of surprised with. Watching it though, I tell you what. I think I prefer it to Conan the Barbarian. I tried it's watch. such fun. Is it? Because he, he's really pissed off. They, he went and just did a couple of bits, but they filmed him from loads of different cameras, so they just reused loads of the footage. Well, he thought he was going to be filming about three or four days' worth he, of cameo. He owed. They, they had him he owed three them weeks. something. He said, oh, I'll do it just for that. And, yeah, they tricked him, then put his face bigger in the poster than Fingerjiggies. Sonia's. So he, he basically got his lawyers to contact Dina De Laurentiis and say... Our work together is finished because of that. And he never worked with him after that because of that. Yeah, it was a bit cheeky, really. You know. Cheeky? Yeah. But yeah, you enjoyed it, did you? I did, I did enjoy it. It was fun. Swords, dragons, and monsters, and Arnie being Arnie. Uh-oh. I've never seen I've never seen a man sword fighting a, a, a woman to the point that they're both so tired they decide to just have sex. And that crashing on the scene, on on the screen then would have been actually what was going on. Yeah. He's probably slipping a finger actually on camera. Oh. Right, let's get into the show. <laughs> <laughs> what we'll do is we'll go to a trailer because our first Can selection you feel from Dan's oh, go on. <laughs> Dan's nine year old selection, VHS selection here. The first one is going to be Team Wolf from 1985. So let's have a trailer. For Michael J. Fox, life hasn't been easy. Hello? Hi. I'm going through changes. His voice is changing. Give me a keg of beer. Is there anything wrong with me? He's got hair on his chest. He stopped being a boy. What do you think about to get worked up? At last, he's become... Scott? Scott Howard? This is your father speaking. Now open this door right this minute. A wolf. An explanation is probably long overdue. Dad, an explanation? Look at me. Look at you. He's always wanted to be something special, but he never expected this. Teen Wolf. He's got style. There's something different about you. Did you change your hair? He's got class. Wolf person. He's got hair. All over his body. Wolves aren't supposed to be shy. He's a wolf in teens' clothing. And tonight is his night to howl. Teen Wolf, a new comedy with Michael J. Fox, star of Back to the Future. So, Teen Wolf from 1985. <laughs> An ordinary high school student discovers that his family has an unusual pedigree (laughs) when he finds himself turning into a werewolf. Directed by Rod Daniel, who we actually discussed one of his films in our last episode when we talked about twin films because he directed K-9 with old Jim Belushi and that German Shepherd. He liked dogs. I was about to say, does he do anything else? 
Yeah, he also did Beethoven's second. So he likes dogs and wolves, I think, this guy. <laughs> Get a dog uh, guy in to do it. <laughs> yeah, uh, he didn't really do any other ones apart from Home Alone 4. Um, is there dogs in it? There is a dog in that one. Fucking hell. I don't know what is going on with him. But yeah, so there we go. He, he's Dog done shagger. a bunch of other stuff, but that's his most sort of famous things. Um, Team Wolf, Michael J. Fox, about a year or so before he made Back to the Future. Before he, um, he, he yeah, because uh, when filming this, he wasn't as popular towards the end of it. They had to have like, didn't have like people around him, like, you know, because he got so popular from his uh, TV show, which was on at the same time. Family Ties, yeah. yeah. And, and actually... By the end of this, Family Ties, he was so popular that when they went to make the sequel, he just didn't couldn't do it because he'd made Back to the Future one. He was Family Ties, and he just didn't have, he couldn't make the sequel. So yeah. the sequel ended up being Jason Bateman. I always want to call um, him Patrick Bateman all the time. I almost said Jason Statham then. I'd love it to have been Jason Patrick Statham. Statham. As well. <laughs> um, Rich, no, uh, Rich Sarah and I, oh, I know. Uh, which Sarah and I saw recently. Uh, no, not Jason St- Patrick Statham. There's no such person. Well, there might be. If you've got a Patrick Statham okay. listening, please let us know. Um, no, Sarah and I saw Patrick Bateman. <laughs> no, Jason Bateman. <laughs> in a, in Knight Rider. It's like a, a eight year old, nine year old kid. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Yes, Team yeah. Wolf. This movie now. Um, at this point, with both of these films, for some reason, this movie I'd seen a few times, and I liked Michael J. Fox. I liked Secret of My Success, and I liked a thing. Bad to Future yeah. never really did it for me. I don't know why, it just never did. And I hadn't seen Part 2 and 3 till not that hugely long ago, to be honest with you. It just wasn't a thing for me. I don't know why. Um, this was a little bit more, but at the same time, I was when, watched, when this came out, I was fucking already watching American Wealth in London. I was literally like, I'm yeah. on the hardcore shit here, and it felt a bit too childish for me, even though I was a kid, but I was watching movies above my belt I shouldn't have been watching, really. But I always did enjoy this yeah. film, and there's a couple of bits in it, but I couldn't remember it. Going into this, I couldn't, didn't remember what happened. I knew he surfed on the van as a wolf, and that's pretty much the only thing I remembered. There's um, <clears throat> This film does something to, to me. Uh, the music, the heartbeat, that opening scene. That's a weird where opening. It really take it's great though because it, really, it really takes me back to what it was like and there's a few moments in this actually it takes me back to what it was like to be in school and you weren't the po- most popular kid or you were trying to be the most popular kid and you couldn't and you're taking do it a shot and yeah yeah you know or you've got bad hair or everyone stares at you or you drop all your stuff in the corridor and this film hit me the reason I love it, firstly, is, is because it feels special to me because it's one of those films I first bought with my own money, like I said. But but it feels special to me because as I was watching it, I started to understand there were some metaphors for puberty with it, which was around mm. about the time that puberty started hitting me, you know, whether mm. it was getting hairy or your body changing or trying to fit in whilst all that's going on. You know, I oh God, I remember a time in school where I had to stand up and I felt so confident that I'd be able to read out this poem or something in one of my classes. But my voice had decided to start breaking that very day. And I didn't know until I stood up in front of the class and I went, the man said to the other man, and my voice was just completely changing Roses up and red. down. Violence are blue. And everyone, all the girls that I had the hot for were laughing at me. All the boys that already used to bully me were like laughing at me. And I just thought, this is shit. And I, and I always remember thinking, if I was a werewolf, none of you would fucking take the piss out of me, would you, you bastards? Oh, Fair it's a great film. I can see how it's this got would be. In it. I, I loved basketball as well. For a young boy, I can see how this would be really good for them to relate to, like changing and having that thing going on. Uh, it's a strange, strange movie to the point when there's a metaphor in it at some point. I'm like, is this a metaphor for being gay? But this is obviously subjects we're going to get into. But then it's just like, is this now a 
diss about being gay. But I don't know. Yeah. I started reading into some weird bits, but we're going to get to that. I don't want to spoil that stuff. We're going to get into it. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, there is some homophobic comments which are made a lot in the 80s, um, unfortunately. Um, but also, you could see this as also a metaphor for just being different or or drugs as well. Um, you know, not following the same path as the kids that are doing the drugs and wanting to do your own thing. Well, the whole werewolf thing it, it is a, it can be a huge metaphor for so many things, can't it? like we just said and the whole tra- changing of oneself you know also um, and not to put a sad note on it but this also weirdly is th- this is the first time I've watched this since I lost my mum um, just uh, just under two years ago and the film revolves around um, a boy and his dad you know who lost their mum he lost his mum and the dad's been really supportive as much as he can uh, so that I got some new elements from it now as a 43-year-old man. Well, so I, put, I put down as, as possibly the, the father being gay as well and saying it's okay, son, to be gay. There was that part of yeah. it because there's no woman yeah, wow, in it whatsoever. Yeah. I saw that. But anyway, wow. we get into this later on. Um, the, the opening scene of the heartbeat going on, that is very anticlimactic, I've got to say, because I was loving that. It's whole dog. It made Elijah... Now, both my kids for both these movies... I've got three kids. The oldest was not watching. The other two kids sat and watched the movie. They didn't really sit and watch the movie. They sat with devices in front of their faces while they watched the movie. Um, Fair enough, whatever they want. Um, They were the ones who were quite excited to watch it. But this did actually pull Elijah out from it because he just kept hearing it. Boom, boom. There's a heartbeat over Black, the titles. And it was such a like, whoa, what's going on here? And it was really, really, really anticlimactic when it's just like bounced and just cuts away. It, was, it definitely gets you looking at the screen. It did Elijah, but it's just a weird thing. But I see how they work that in later on using a lot of uh, sound effects, which would be in his head, his heartbeat, him hearing things differently and changing into a wolf. So I I, I do get why I do it. It just felt a bit anticlimactic. Yeah, I get what you mean. I quite liked it, though. I always like that start, and you get that, that bit that looks like the moon, but it's actually one of the lights in the ceiling, and they shot it straight from straight under. And then it just cuts to Michael J. Fox... You know, his face is absolutely pouring sweat. It looks like something terrible is happening. And then you realise he's literally just got the pressure of doing a, a three-throw at he's a on basketball a, game. an inept basketball team who are all shit apart from yeah. one player. I love Chubby on that team. Chubbs is my favourite. Is that his name? Is That's, that the guy who's a little Chubbs. bit larger than, than Slim? Is he called Chubbs? Yeah, Chubby. That's his name. That's his wow. character's name. Fair enough. <laughs> It's brilliant, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's great stuff. So uh, he misses his free shot, and he gets knocked over by one of the big lads, who is actually uh, his rival. Mick, who isn't it? gonna... It's his rival yeah. for the film. He even he he's even like growls at him at one old. point, and his eyes go a little bit red. No, he's kind of growls at him to take the shot. That's right. Yeah, and that's the first little hint. Did you say he's like thirty-five there's... years old. Yeah, Mick is about 35 years old. He's just one of those dudes. Michael J. Fox genuinely older. looks about 16. Yeah, well, they, they, do yeah. say that, they do say that he was held back a couple of years um, because he did time, and that's why you know wow. he is a bit older. But, he did juvie, man. But, <laughs> but then he's hooking up with, like, um, Pamela, who's, like, probably the same age as Michael J. Fox, like, 17. So it's like, mm, okay. Anyway, he misses his shot. This is the 80s, man. It was the 80s, anything goes. Um, and we, we, we then see Scott in the shower room. And, and uh, another little... There's lots of little hints peppered throughout this. So we've already had a growl. He's got a long old hair in his chest, hasn't he? Well, before then, even, he says, I thought you were going to stop eating uh, whatever it is, Chubbs. And he's like, have you been snooping around in my locker? And he's like, no, oh, I can, can smell, smell it from here. Yeah, okay. He's like, no, you can't smell it from here. But then, yes, you're right, Gav. What does he find on his chest? Big old long hair in his chest, and he just pulls out and just kind of looks at it, and just, that's it. And um, it, it, this is the thing, though. You're going into this movie, looking at going to the video shop or whatever, the front cover, and looking at it, and you know what this is, Teen Wolf. We all know what's going to happen. So from the get-go, they don't need to hide it. It's not American Mouth in London where we put intrigue and mystery into it. We know what's going to happen, even though the title has a werewolf in London, but we don't know what's going to happen. We know what's going to happen here. So straight away, it's no no pussy-footing about with it, or should we say wolf-footing about with it. it, it <laughs> literally, straight away, boom, smelling, yet yeah, pulling out hair. So we're like, oh, come on, come on, wing it into werewolf, wing it into werewolf. It's like, it's such a... Is this the only... It's like for Bigfoots is a... Um, uh, what's the movie with um, uh, Harry and Henderson's? Did yeah. is this what they, this did for werewolves? 
Maybe it's like a family werewolf film, isn't it? This one, maybe there's probably it, it not many Michael of those J. around. Fox, it obviously went on to big things, so like it's in this canon of uh, popular films. I definitely see it as in the same. Um, as a massive cult following, as fancy dress costumes. Harry and the Hendersons, definitely, yeah. Yeah, because Mark's got one. Our buddy Mark's got a costume. Shout out, Mark. Right. Shout out to your costume, Mark. Yeah, that was dope. Um, yes, whilst we're in the gym, we also get to meet Scott's best friend, Styles. Now, Styles is a party animal. He's Stifler before Stifler. He wears t shirts that say lots of things like, Life sucks, then you die, or what are you looking at, Dick knows. His t-shirts are just so cool. Um, he knows all the gossip. That's why it's called Stoles, though, isn't it? Nowadays, you think, you probably don't really have much Stoles there, but, you know. But he's got, he's got a van later on, you know. He's always trying to buy beer. He's not quite old enough to buy beer. He's, he's doing all these cool things. And he's basically, you know, he's always organising parties and, and stuff. So he, he comes into the locker room, chats a bit to Scott. He's the one that van surfs, you know, wants to get booze. Be yeah. called at the parties. He's, he's that dude. So, well, so, so basically, we got the jock, the the kid that uh, under un, un, under not understood probably Mog J Fox, the larger buddy, and his cool <laughs> quirky like fun time pal. Right, we got the whole gang in, here, haven't we? Throw into the mix the the girl that is just the girl next door, your best friend that you don't know is secretly in love with you, and the hot cheerleader Pamela who you don't want to get with, but she's with the jock. So we've got that mix, all tick, tick, tick here. All the boxes are ticked, definitely. Scott comes out of the gym, and he meets up with Boof, his his buddy Boof. Boof. And she... Boof. And she and him have been friends since they were tiny. And they walk home together. She likes him. they have a bit of a heart-to-heart. She loves him. And do you know what, Gav? I love her, because... Pamela is supposed to be the hot cheerleader in this one, but Booth is just so girl next door. I love her in this. Absolutely love her in this. That's all um, I've got to say on the matter. He also wants to leave his team, basketball team. He's fed up of being average. He's just sick of being an he average says, person. He says, I'm sick of this town. I don't want to be... I'm sick of this. I'm just everything. And she's like, this town's not that bad. You're not average. You're great. You're, you're doing okay. So what... Thing is here, this whole this here, this is a little, almost like a little catalyst. This is this is him striving to be a better person, a different person in the world. So he gets the opportunity, gets the chance to be popular and be that person, but then decides that it's not that good and goes back to what she's now saying here. So he didn't even go on. Obviously, goes on his journey to discover this self-discovery journey. But he he then comes back to it and he's back to where she's just saying, "Now you're all right. You've got all this stuff." He goes back to that life, doesn't he? Yeah, he, so doesn't he just doesn't see got... it there and then. He has to go and be yeah. super cool to realise being super cool isn't what it's about in life. So right now in life, she's saying you've got me, uh, and she's not saying it to me. She basically loves him, and she's best friend. He's got a very caring dad who's looked after him since his mum died. He's on a basketball team where he does all right, and he's got pretty good grades. You he know, works I mean, he's his not... dad's hardware store. You know. He may not be the Brad Pitt of the town, but he is doing it all right. And that's why I think this film is also a metaphor for drugs, because you get this where people see other kids doing these things. And for example, the werewolf could be, let's say it's cocaine, and you get into some cocaine and everyone really likes you because you're this other person when you're doing the cocaine. You're really confident, athletic, you, you, you know, you're the fun guy. Everyone wants to be with the wolf. And actually, when when it's all said and done, when you, you're not doing... Like, when he turns up at the disco later on and he's not the wolf, when he comes sober to the disco and he hasn't done the cocaine, let's say, people are just not interested in him. And they're like, aren't you... Come on, do it, man. I want to see, you know, get... Oh, come on. Or the and dude who like... gets pissed all the time and the mate would come out and get really drunk and do stupid shit and then he comes up one day sober. He's like, oh, aren't you going to get drunk? Come on. Yeah. And then you think, no, actually, I don't want to be that guy anymore. I want to be me. So I do think that you could take a lot of stuff from this, and you've already brought into the, the gay thing into it as well. You know, uh, there's so much you could, uh, and it's a silly film. Well, it's a silly family werewolf you know, film, but there's a lot from it. We get later on the, 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 going back to the gay thing. Later on, you get him. Uh, uh, he's called things. He, he's called at a disco later on a freak, and he hates being called a freak. So let's just say it's the '80s, and he is gay, and, and the slurs around being gay at the time were there, and people would 
distaste for where, if, if you're open with etc etc everybody knows what's going on <clears throat> and um he he gets really angry and oh, you're called a freak so he goes outside and he punches the wall while he's doing that behind him is a big sign that says beavers are best now <laughs> i'm not <Wow>. saying <laughs> that this is a meta uh, so a metaphor for saying vaginas you know the slang for beavers vaginas pussies etc etc vaginas being best so let's not go for let's not be gay let's stick with women but it was so odd that that was so there and it's like that's such a weird thing i'm i'm probably really looking into it hang on can i take can i stop pause because this is my birthday episode and you are delivering me a beautiful present here gav because we're discussing one of my favorite childhood films but also you're doing something which i love you're finding layers Mm. you're looking through and you've met you're making my birthday dreams come true because i never spotted that before that's amazing that you and that's that might just be a coincidence but also you know it's brilliant that you've said it i think that's great it's a strange odd coincidence but look at you you're so be. pleased with yourself I'm, look how happy you've made me <laughs> i'm <laughs> glad i'm glad um oh. it was just a weird thing that's that's hard by store dad's hardware store so yeah he works at dad's hardware store stroke cooking stores utensils things like that and uh, as uh, and there's a kid in there it's just buying a little whistle off the uh off the stand going and he can um, hear it really loud now i was like why can't the dad if dad we know the spoiler dad's werewolf why can't dad hear and i was like ah the dad's a pro werewolf he can probably just cancel that shit out go yeah it's just a kid fucking do you know what i mean yeah. He's just getting his skills because he is ultimately, as you say, going into puberty, werewolf puberty. Because well, it's only happening now. Why is it happening now? There's another because he's because he's hitting puberty. But there's another yeah. um, tangent here, which is Spider Man. Because Spider Man, when he got all of his powers, they all kind of came flooding through at the same time. Yeah. And actually, later on, his dad even says to him, "With great power, Scott." comes a greater sense of responsibility, which is almost the Spider-Man phrase, which is used in all the films. With great power comes great responsibility. So you could even say, is he some kind of a superhero? You know, there's a little, oh, there's like so much to this. But yes, you're right, Gav. Kid blowing a dog whistle. We get the heartbeat in his head, which you talked about earlier. He runs around the corner and the kid says, well, this whistle doesn't even work. And uh, Scott solid, looks at the whistle. It's a solid says, dog whistle. Yeah. It's a dog whistle. This is weird. Yeah. But his dad would have heard it, but I assume his dad being a pro werewolf was just like, yeah, whatever. I can handle that shit. What do you think? What do you think of his dad's uh, look as a wolf? Fucking That's hell. great. Oh my God. <laughs> it's I was good, isn't it? in hysterics. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't remember that. He I love looked... it when he just opens the bathroom door and he's like, all right, Scott, we need to talk. He did, if, <laughs> like, America, if America Wealth for London was that, the transformation was that. I wouldn't be that scared, you know. Fucking hell! Well, if he's coming after me, look at oh, what are you what? Give us a cuddle. Give us a little. Give us a little snuggle. <laughs> his yeah. dad is that's cuddly, doesn't he? He's he a cuddly werewolf. I fucking love it. Him should so hook, he should hook up with the little girl at the end of the howling. The get the not the oh little God, girl, the, the uh, little female Harry Kismo girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. D Wallace, isn't oh, it? I hate, yeah. I hate that thing. Um, so Scott suffers some humiliation now because. His dad's hardware store have got to deliver some goods to school um, and they're doing a school play. And he gets to meet Mr. Thorne, who's the headmaster, who's a complete asshole to Scott. And that's because he's got a bit of a backstory with Scott's dad, Howard, which we'll find out a bit more about later, don't we? Oh, I didn't realise. Sorry, I must have missed this. My kids are probably moaning about something. (laughs) So Scott arrives at the drama club with all the deliveries for the, the props and everything and the paint that they need. And Pamela, his, the love of his life, is on stage rehearsing. You can burn my village. You can burn my house to the ground. But please. And he's like looking at her in awe like, wow. Oh, she's... man, can you please be an American female, <laughs> uh, like old timey person? For you. Do it for, for me. You, I can. Do your own little play for me called called Danifer. Oh, Gavin, I do declare I've never seen such a handsome man in all my days. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, he's got some balls because he gets up on the stage and the guy's like, "Uh, sorry, who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm here to deliver all the paint and everything. You don't go on stage when they're performing to deliver. You go around the side. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? What's that? 
But he takes this opportunity. He says, oh, Pamela, uh, very quickly, just wanted to see, are you going to the school dance? Because I'd like to drive you in my car. So he's got the balls to ask that. But unfortunately, his body, with a puberty slash werewolf thing going on, decides this is a good time to give him the world's hairiest hands. And he hides them behind his back. Uh, She's, yeah. She says, no, I'm going with Mick. It's like a sex machine from Dust of Dawn. It's exactly like that, isn't it? I like the fact, when she's on the stage here, before he turns up, the, the, the director is out and, uh, by himself in the audience, and he's like, come on, we need more performance. Come on, we need more motion, dear. Um, we want to be able to feel you. We want to be able to smell you. He actually says that. Yeah. What the fuck? He's what, a creepy what do you teacher. Mean, smell <laughs> you. Like, what, 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 what? Well, Mick, the guy who Scott growled at earlier during the basketball game, the 40 year old student, he shows up. <laughs> And it turns out the joke. He, he turns out that he and Pamela are an item, and he picks her off the stage with one arm because he's so big, and he pats her on the butt, and he walks off and says, "Don't talk to my girl, ha 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 ha," and walks off with her. And Scott just thinks, "Oh, for fuck's sake, my life sucks, doesn't it?" Segway, Fast and Furious Five. They got a, a, a guy to slap the woman's ass. And they managed to get off her ass, like the underwear, a uh, uh, swimming costume, the handprint they needed for later on. <laughs> that's what that was a crack trap. Was, what the hell? And that is why I needed you to watch that franchise, Scav. That's fucking okay? hilarious. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I just popped in my head. What do you think of Vin Diesel's voice? That's right. I actually thought I didn't really like Vin Diesel, but he's all right, actually. He, um, his catchphrase, which isn't really a catchphrase, but everyone says it is, whenever anyone asks a question in any of the Fast and Furious movies, but why would we do this? What's the point in this plan? But why are we doing that? He always just says, one word, family. Because <laughs> <'Cause just, laughs> that's all he ever says. Family. Family. Yeah, but hang on, why do you need us to break into that bank and yeah. then destroy that submarine and take the Queen's crown and then kidnap the king? Family. Of... Family. Oh, Maybe. all right. Well, I, I am enjoying the films, I've got to say. We, 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 we could do a side cast, couldn't we? Just do those movies. The cast and the furious. Oh, oh, the side cast, oh, the oh, podcast oh. and the furious. I'm, I'm half masked right now. All right, come on. <laughs> so, his hands then turn back to normal. Nick's gone away. Styles is trying to get a keg of beer with their buddy Lewis and they walk in and you've got this real ball buster of an old guy and he walks in and he says hey, oh, can I get a keg of beer and he's like get any ID Sonny and he's like no I don't but I can give you a couple of extra dollars and he's like he takes them and then he's like well, I'm not going to give you a keg of beer unless you've got any ID so he's just lost all his money you got off doing my and, handy or something <laughs> Is that what you would have done? I don't know. Go on, mate. I had a friend. I'll give you a handy for some shandy. I had a buddy that worked at North Licence. It was amazing. Just go down there and just like just go. Oh, I'm just gonna take this, open up the fridge, and just take the beer. And be like, yeah, no worries. Brilliant. You know, that was good. Wow. Yeah. Now, one little side tangent here is Michael J. Fox. Obviously, and I don't want to bring a downer on this, but he's famously got quite bad Parkinson's disease these days which you can see even as early as this film and you see him walking down the road he's fidgeting constantly hand in a pocket hand out the pocket he's constantly scratching and part of it is he's got a rat have I got a rash why am I scratching it's because he's a werewolf but there is little elements of it even at this young age where you can see there's something a little some, some neurological uh, things going on yeah I used, yeah, to, uh, and, and... I used to work what? in a restaurant um, when I got out of college for the first few years um, for a job, and there used to be a woman come in called Barbara, bless her, passed away now. Um, she had Parkinson's quite badly, and I was always the one who kind of looked after her to the point where I'd have to cut up her food for her, Aww. and she would just be throwing it all over the place. Aww. And then you just occasionally get people who would complain, be like, <sighs> fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> like, poor Those lady's people. by herself. She hasn't got long. Her husband brings in and says, there you go. And, you know, mm. and just leaves every day there because she has nothing else she could do, you know. And she's coming to the restaurant and she'd just be sitting there smiling away. She can never really say thank you to me, but she'd be so happy smiling away with her hands shaking everywhere and stuff. And I'd be like, how oh, you doing? You all right her. today? 
And they'd always go, Gav, Barbara's coming. All right, fucking. Oh, you're a good guy, aren't you, Gav? You're a good guy. That's heartwarming, that is. It it wasn't part of my job description, though. (laughs) (laughs) You didn't get paid any more for it, but it made her happy. She did make a mess, didn't she? She (laughs) did. But it's fine. I I mean, in the frighteners, you can really see where it's really deteriorating. I don't know if you remember the specific scenes and moments in the frighteners where Michael J. Fox is visibly you know really no i i haven't looked he, back and i guess you could now like you did in this i i hadn't or have not ever, any of his he, films he but... wouldn't have known he wouldn't have even known making this and back to the future that that was what it was but it, you know it just looks like he's one of those cool guys who's always sort of a bit you know moving around a little bit like brad pitt's a bit fidgety when he talks you know people like that but um yeah obviously unfortunately he's sadly riddled as they say with parkinson's now have you seen the uh, kirby enthusiasm episode Yes, he gets into a fight with Larry. Hilarious. And he's, he's above Larry in a hotel room. And Larry <laughs> goes upstairs and says to him, you stop thumping around so much because you're walking around so much. And it's, he's like, I can't help it, it's my Parkinson's. And it's like an argument. It's like, oh, my God, you're so funny. The, the best bit is when he's leaving the restaurant and he looks over at Michael J. Fox and he does like some, a hand gesture and he says, <laughs> were you just doing the pretend, were you pretending to play an invisible violin? And Michael J. Fox says... No, I've got Parkinson's. But really, he was. He just uses his Parkinson's as a, an excuse to be a dick to people. <laughs> That's brilliant, isn't it? I love, uh, it. I love it. Right, let's carry on. Um, cool. So, so, so they can't buy the beer. Yeah, uh, then we cut away to, Dad, I'm quitting the basketball team. Hang on, son. You've got a commitment to the team. You've got a commitment to your school, you know, a commitment to yourself. What if you do this? What else are you going to quit? Come on. Exactly. But, Styles Before comes, they can get into it. Styles comes and picks him exactly. up. And exactly. And says to him, like, right, I've got an idea. You're going to help me get some beer. How? You're going to put this mask on, ski mask, take this fake gun, go in there <laughs> and go, give me the money. When they uh, give him the beer, when they give him the beer, hand them the money, then just leave. So you're not really doing a crime. Well, you probably are. <laughs> it's still trying to be dece- deceptive, isn't it, really? It's silly. You could actually so get Scott shot says- yourself as well, couldn't you? Well, Scott says, look, give me the money. I'll do this without the gun and the mask. And he goes in and he says to the guy, hey, uh, can I get this, this and this and uh, a keg of beer? And the guy says, powers. you goddamn little shits don't ever learn, do you? Yeah. No ID, no beer. And then he just leans over. Guess, and like, yeah. We we get this quote so much in the bone house. My family, we always quote this. We lean, he leans over and he just says, give me a keg of beer. Nice. His eyes are just glowing red, and the guy just goes, <laughs> just gives him it. <laughs> the Bone House. That's an interesting, uh, I never thought of it, but yes, the Bone House. Bone alone. After this, they're so happy, Styles goes, I'm going to go surfing, puts on a, a, a Aloha Hawaiian T-shirt, which I have a very, 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 very similar one to that he has, which I was almost supporting, like, uh, it's on my projector, like, can I see that clearer? Is that is that actually my one? Um, and surfs <laughs> while the Beach Boys play on top of the van. This was is definitely an eighties thing. And if kids, everybody kids has don't a do it, don't try. Well, I mean, actually, a story about that. Shout out to Ricky Morgan, our Legion brother. He told me a story once. Um, we were we were doing an ep- a, I think we recorded together, and he told me about a guy that he knew that did a te- as they as we call it did a team wolf across the football field at his high school, and their buddy and got how on top many of more a people van. did it? You know, <laughs> I know, I know. Well, that's just Ricky that's told me this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's probably a bunch of oh, other people that have yeah. tried this. Fuck yeah, it's dangerous. It's, like, it's so dangerous. Not even the Fast and the Furious would do this. I wouldn't see Vin Vin Statham up there. <laughs> <laughs> Vince Statham. <laughs> All bald. <laughs> if Vin Diesel's well bald, though, and he's only got a bit of hair in his eyebrows, that's it. I bet he shaves his chest. Guaranteed. Yeah. What I love, though, is if you ever if you Google Vin Diesel between Fast and Furious films, he just lets the weight pile on. He just has like this real proper dad bod with big boobs. Martin, and a big Martin butt. Lawrence style, yeah? Yeah. And then they go... Uh, Vin, just to let you know, we'd stop filming in three months. And he's like, all right, okay, I'll hit the gym. And he goes to the gym and just gets in shape real quick for it. Well, I say in shape. He's still got a bit of a dad bod, really, I think. But Yeah, he's got, he's, he's got a bit more of a stronger dad bod, a bit more chips. Have you seen the, 
the I don't want to keep bringing them up. But have you seen the flying headbutt move that he does yet? Has that been in one of any no, of No, 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 that's in the next movie. I did not read a quick <laughs> review of that earlier, saying any movie that has been <laughs> Devil doing a flying headbutt, it gets my appro- approval. Because I was just like, sweet. I'm I'm like I said, hate. if we weren't doing this right now, I'd be watching Vin Diesel <laughs> flying around the place with a headbutt. It's like a Street Fighter move. I can't wait. I literally you can can't, tell wait. About it. I can't You can wait. tell me about it. Yeah. Anyway, um, so, yes, surfing, surfing USA, uh, Ricky Morgan, don't do it, guys. Don't get on top of a van and surf because it's silly. While he's surfing, of course, he is. Um, Scott, Scott spots his ears. He's got Mr. Spock ears in the mirror. Um and he sort of almost loses control of the van, but then it's all good and that's fine. Um, they get uh, where do they go? Are they uh, they get to the um, party? Now this movie is a PG. I was a little Ooh. bit surprised by this because I'm sitting here watching this with Daisy, who's um, coming up twelve this year, you know. And uh, there's a bit where there's this plate of jelly put down the t- cleavage of a woman, and the guy's go puts his face down there, and that's like the whole so, game thing. Like so Daisy just picture. looks at me. <laughs> Daisy just looks at me like shocked face. When yeah, it's the eighties, Daisy. I'm sorry. So to paint a picture, Styles is the party master. Um, so he's in charge Stifler, of like you pairing said. up names. Yeah, he's like Stifler. And he, he's in charge of pairing people up by picking names out of a hat. And when he picks you, you've got a, a piece of paper in your hand that's got another name on it. And you have to do a challenge. So what, there's a couple that are tied together in their underwear covered in spray cream that have to get out of a, being tied up. I don't know, Chubby gets picked to go with some girl and she says, the challenge for you, Chubby, is you've got to eat this whole bowl of green jello. And he says, well, okay, that's quite easy. And the girl says, what do I do? And as Gav's just pointed out, he says, you've got to hold it. So he pours the entire lot down her front and Chubbs goes off to eat that off of her boobs. Lovely. Um, And then Scott, well, Booth then gets picked and she pretends that she's got Scott. Uh, actually, it was Pamela that had Scott <clears throat> on a bit of paper. While they're picking it, there's someone just behind them smoking a spliff, and I was a bit like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. It's one of those parties. It's one of these, so, one of these 80s PG movies, is what, it? What you realise is when they arrive at the party, actually, Scott is kind of popular. <laughs> Lewis is popular, their buddy, and so stars. Like, they're actually not. You know, Scott thinks they're average and they're shit, but actually, people know them. They get to this party, they're liked, they've got a lot of friends. So anyway, Scott and Booth. Booth pretends she's got Scott, and they end up getting shoved in a cupboard together. And I told a story similar to this many year, many episodes back, where I got put in a cupboard with somebody at a party when I was about 15. I didn't do what Scott does, though, which is they have a little kissy cuddle, and then she slaps him because she feels some pain in her back. Mm. And when they come, when they come out of the cupboard, all of her clothes are slashed all down the back. When he comes out ends. of the cupboard, yes. When he comes out the closet, oh my god, you blow closet, my yeah. mind. Yeah. Hang on, I need to take a second because you've just blown my mind. Well he has a he has a bad experience oh, with a girl oh. then comes out the closet. Fucking hell, Gav, you are blowing my mind. Good. Glad it's the only thing I'm blowing. <laughs> it's my birthday. Uh, yeah, she's got all rips on the top as she walks away from the uh, closet. Um like proper rips. Um and that's that, that really, isn't it? We're back yeah, home. Mick, home. Mick show, well, Mick shows up hammered, mm. um, and he sort of says to Pamela, "Come on, let's get out of here." So he's a dick. He's a bit of a drunk. We we get that, you know. He's he's not a nice guy. He's done he's done time from what we hear. Whether that's real or not, we don't know. Um, yes, and Scott gets home very late at night, and we get that ding 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 ding. The music really in this. Sinister music. The eighties music in this though. There's, there's there's a couple of songs. I was just like, this literally I was, one track I loved so much. It, it was so it literally I could smell the eighties. I literally <laughs> felt like I was back in the eighties in an arcade with like you know smelly kids. Like, whoa. It was um it was a guy singing, it was later on, it was a song which was later on. I've got it in my notes, but I'm like, I really like this oh. song. So I think I know which song it is. I really, it literally. Is it the song "Joy the Basketball back. Game" at the end? Maybe it threw me back to being the eighties. I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. It's in my notes. Okay, cool. So yeah, so Scott doesn't speak to Dad. He goes straight up to the bathroom. Dad's so this a little is bit Dixie. concerned. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He's like, Scott, we need to talk. Scott, Scott, are you in there? 
and he doesn't answer his dad and he looks in the mirror and he sort of says oh god what is going on what is happening with me and he's sweating he's sweating and then we get all these effects of bubbling foreheads and movement and hair sprouting and it's fangs it's a really good transformation it was like I'm... literally getting you a bit into like uh it was very howling transformation now who did the effects i'm just having a quick look I'm, I'm glad, Gav. I was going to ask you, because <clears throat> the staple of any conversation about a werewolf film is what did you think of the transformation? Yeah. And you, so you thought it was good? I thought it was very good for it being um, a, 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 a PG movie really aimed at the teenage crowd. I thought it was pretty good, not going too far, and just worked. I'm looking up the makeup. Oh, if I first. remember rightly, they used a, a second guy. Teresa, for the mid- Teresa Austin is the makeup artist. Okay. Uh, no, there's a couple of people. There's a few special makeup effects people, but nobody I know of. But it looked a little howling because it had the uh, the bubbling under the uh, brow, cheekbones, I think, as well, which was very howling. Uh... Easy to do, though. Lot of, lots of quick cuts and edits. Um, and Scott sort of sees himself in the mirror and falls back and he says, Jeez, Louise. He looks, like a, he looks like a good wolf, though, you know. Man, I tell you what, that is, and, and again, shout out to our buddy Mark, because that is a hell of a, I think it's a really decent uh, bipedal werewolf. Or, or This is more of a man wolf, isn't it, really, than a werewolf. Um, but he looks fucking great. And his dad starts banging on the bathroom door and he says, Scott, we really need to talk. Whatever it is, you can talk to me. And he's like, mm, I don't think, not this one, dad, not this time. And he's like, trust me, son, you can talk to me about anything. And he says, all right. You asked for it. Right now, I'm I'm going to have to take a picture of this and I'll put it on the Facebook page. I think everyone will be able to hear me taking a picture of this. A, I've got you up and I've got a picture of the dad up. Don't move. Amazing. That's going up on the Facebook group. Um, we get the dad. like the dad. Well, you'll see. We get the dad <laughs> pop up uh, uh, at the door and he, he's just, his nose is all squashed flat down. He's still got his glasses on. You can see a little, oh, a little, bit, of his, see a little bit of his, it's like basically no moustache werewolf. It's, I love him. It's just, I don't know, he looks all soft and furry. He says, um, he says, when were you going to tell me about this? He said, I've been meaning to tell you this. And he said, when, Dad? When? Jesus Christ. He's like, well, this is my, one of my favourite lines. He says, to be honest, I didn't know if I'd have to tell you something because it usually skips a generation. And Scott says, well, it didn't skip a generation, did it, Dad? It landed on my face. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, he's just so angry. And he goes storming off to bed and slams the door shut. And that's that's literally like your werewolf scene. It's like a I, kid, I teenager. Like, I like it later on when he, he's in his yellow shorts and vest and it's all that hair all over him as well he like he could easily be quite intimidating here and it's really well done it's almost like mont uh, uh wolf cop you know that sort of way Dude, really well he, done when he's in his basketball outfit and he's doing those basketball moves between he's the legs it and just staring at everybody and everyone's in shock it's like what the fuck because um they put um obviously part of the makeup they put on his like um, eyeliner under, under his eyes to give him those darker looks and he's got a slightly darker tip of his nose I think it's a really great werewolf makeup and, and, and fur and costume it looks, just looks great I think really yeah, good absolutely agree it's quite a uh, surprise it could have gone they could have gone really bad it totally lives up to the front cover do you know what I mean? You see that front cover and you think, okay, but actually this is a decent werewolf and it just it looks it's as good really, as it does on... It's pretty good, yeah. So, funny enough, it was a full moon that night. So in the morning, we wake up and there's a very real atmosphere, as you can imagine. They start talking and this is where he says, look, um, it's not a bad thing being a werewolf. There are some good things that come with it. You know, you'll, you'll, have, you'll be able to do a lot. His dad tries to sell it to me. He says, you'll be able to do a lot of things that the other guys can't do. And he says... Ah, Dad, I don't need this. I've got a bad haircut. I've got a terrible jump shot in basketball. I've got my own problems. This isn't another problem I need. And he says, listen, the great power comes great responsibility. You know, you, you've got to use this properly, use it wisely. It's part of you. You, you, you are a werewolf, but the werewolf isn't just you. It's and, just a part of you. And he says it's a part of you, but doesn't change who you are on the inside. Yep. It's like, a conversation about something else really isn't it like yeah, possibly great. being gay or something else 
It's yeah. brilliant. It's, it's it's well written. Let's 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 say this right now. It's well written film. Well, what what what's good about it with the metaphor is you you could use this film like you did to help you. If you were gay and not understanding it, you could take this away from that. If you did have a drug dependency as a teenager, you could possibly look at it and say, each of you could take it like you use as puberty. You can use it as a different thing. That's really good. It's a really good thing for a film to have. I miss that kind of stuff. You don't get that so much in films. There was a lot of heart in some 80s films, as much as they had homophobic slurs and Slightly really bad... Racist and just, yeah, or lots yeah, of sexist, sexism. Yeah. Quite often they had a lot of heart behind it as well. Um, you know, and that's not to say that that counts as out, but, you know, it's, it's, there is heart there with this film, definitely. And that's probably why it, it, it sits in my, you know, my childhood favourites. Mm-hmm. Um, he gets to school, so he's probably emitting some kind of pheromone or something there because he's, he's a wolf. He gets to school, and while he's there, Pamela says, Hello. Have you done something different with your hair? You you look good today. And he's like, what the fuck is the hot cheerleader talking to me for? This is weird. Um, so she just says, yeah, there's something different about you. And he's like, well, she feel, okay. Is she smelling his uh, hormones or something? What, what's going on? Yeah. His pheromones. His pheromones. Yeah. Oh. Smelling his um, hormones. <laughs> don't smell my hormones, please. <laughs> Now, there's a really cool, really paranoid uh, scene now where every class or seems to mention the words... Hormones or horny moans. My horny moans. <laughs> Your eyebrow went up. You did the rock eyebrow then when you did that. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. That is very sexy. I can do that. Do you want to be in a Fast and Furious movie with that eyebrow? I could definitely do that. I could be, I could be the rock standing. The pebble. <laughs> And I'll be his um, standing the boulder. <laughs> that makes you sound cool. I'm still the pebble. The boulder. Um, so, yes, we get this paranoid moment where we get this montage of different classes. And they're like, Thomas, wolf, wolf, wolf. And they keep cutting to the word wolf. The and he's the same wolf and he's just going, oh, yeah. And at one point they say to him, Scott, what do you think the answer to this mathematical equation is? And he says, oh, oh. And, and you can't get very funny, out. but you're quite correct because it's like the door of like a wolf thing or something. <laughs> and uh, she asks him to come up to the class. Everyone's taking the piss out of him. He goes up to the front to, to write on the, the chalkboard, but he notices he's got the nails, the really long fingernails. He runs out the classroom. <laughs> Michael J. Fox's um, comic physical comedy here is fantastic because he Time runs in. down the corridor. And that oh, guy says, you can't go in the bathroom, it's wet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, you took it's us through it, Gav. What well, it's, it's a long shot of uh, him uh, running past the uh, guy who's been mopping the floor in the corridor. The camera stays still, and he just carries on running away. And we just see him slip, 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 slip. But then we cut to the other angles. He slips past <laughs> the, it's where he's supposed to go and has to come back on himself. It's very slapstick. and it, it's, it's very funny. It's the only time we very get funny. any of that in this movie, actually. But I did quite enjoy it. Yeah. yeah, he's a funny guy. He's a good guy that can fall and uh, fall over good and yeah. walk into things. Um, so he ends up going into some really far away boys' toilets because you know he feels that, that he's going to change again. And he looks in the mirror and he says, "Don't change, don't change, don't change." And then suddenly, Principal Thorne is behind him. Well, he goes into one toilet and there's some kid doing graffiti, so he runs out and goes into another toilet. And the principal right. says, "Saying, have you got a pen? Let me see your hands." And he says, no. And he says, let me see your hands. And obviously his hands are fi- fingernail talons. But he shows him his hands and they're back to normal. And he says, you haven't got a marker on you, have you? A permanent marker? In the end. He says, no. And he says, hmm. And then as Scott leaves, he finds, the principal finds a really thick clump of hair in the sink. We cut to the garage and Stoles is looking for his brother's stash of weed. Again, mm. a PG movie. Look, Okay. Luckily, his mate's a werewolf and can sniff out the weed. Well, this is the coming out scene now, isn't it? He says, there's something I want to tell you. And he's like, look, I'm not interested right now, Scott. I've got to try and find the weed. It's hilarious because I had this exact thing happen to me. My friend said to me, I need to tell you something. Because I was like, oh, hang out with the kids. I'll be back in me. I just need to put this washing away. Years ago. I need to tell you something. The camp says, I was like, okay. And I thought it was really weird. I was putting clothes away. 
he sat in the corner and said, I've got to tell you something. And I went, okay, what? And he goes, I'm gay. And he was, he was coming out to me telling me he's gay. And I was like, oh, thank God for that. I thought you could tell me you're going to die. And then I just carried on putting the clothes away. And I was like, it doesn't matter. You're still you, aren't you? That's the British version of this scene. Rather than two guys in a, an American garage looking for weed, while well, one of them tells them he's a werewolf, in the British version, it's one guy telling the other he's gay, while the other guy hangs his socks up on the washing line. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, it's, you're still you, aren't you? You know, so it doesn't really matter. You know, you, it doesn't matter. But yeah, this is it. But this, this scene here is the exact same scene, except... I didn't say to my mate, well, you're not a fag, are you? And, uh, I was just fag. like, oh, my God. Did he say fag or faggot? I think he abbreviated um, I to fag, know, but I was, he? I was have briefly chatted to court psyops about this yeah. um, because you were talking about, you know, how in the 80s it, that word, unfortunately, was used a lot. And, you know, I'm covering Monster Squad soon with RJ McCready for his Bite Size Cinema podcast, and they do say that F word in there quite a lot. Um it's an unfortunate thing from the 80s where those homophobic slurs were just there. Mm. It's not great. It's not mm. great. But, yeah, he does say it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he says, oh, you're not a werewolf, obviously. And he says, no, I am. And then you hear like a little noise. And then start, and then Styles looks around and Scott's really transformed. Mm. And he says, can you do that whenever you want? And he says, yeah. Oh, I just did. So, yeah. And he says, uh. What can a teen wolf do? And he says, well, I can find your stash for you. And he finds it. Big clump of weed. Big bag of weed. So my metaphor in thinking it, it, it could possibly be about being gay must be just literally pushed out by this one sentence he says, oh, what, are you a fag? That must push out my whole theory of the metaphor of being gay. Because it is so, so stopping that in its tracks there and then with such a uh, I know at the time they wouldn't, didn't think it was demeaning but it's such a demeaning word it stops that whole thing right there doesn't it I hate that word so much Yeah, that and the full word as well I just do not like it um, I think it's terrible um, but anyway that's just me <laughs> but, but, uh, but uh, am I right in that that, that, that that stops my I mean, ultimately, this is a silly family werewolf film, Gav. So I think you're within your rights to still think that it has those elements, uh, those undertones to it, just like we are with the drugs. And I think you can still look at that throughout it. Maybe that was their way of saying this film isn't about that. I think possibly. Did they address that? Did they realise this and say that you need to put something in there? Did the writer do that? Like, it's... they didn't need that, that word, did they? They didn't need him to say that. It was strange. But it, it's a really, really, really odd thing to have. Um, but it does go to show you how laxed we were with such things in a PG family comedy. But at the same time, Gav, which is terrible because says... that's telling that's telling kids who are watching that. If they said to my mum, what's a fag, you know? But at the same time, after he said that, and after he's revealed he is a werewolf <clears throat> or, or, or gay, if yeah. you want to go down that route, um, then he does say to him, so what do you think? How, do, how, you know, what do you still feel about me now I've revealed this to you? And Star says, you're beautiful. So, <sighs> like, like my buddy coming out to me and me saying, well, you're still you, aren't you? Yeah, it's exactly. I, you know, it's a really hard one to go with because I did when he said that you're beautiful, but he says that, and then I was just like, well, he says you're beautiful to wolf. Is he saying that if you're gay, you're you're uglier than a man that's turned into a wolf? Do you know what I mean? You're not as beautiful as that. And it, it was just like I was just going on to like full like different You've places. You've gone with deep this. on this. You've gone deep because I'm well, watching it as a 44 year old man in 2021. That's why, you know. But ultimately, what Styles sees this is as an opportunity to make some money. Yeah, of course. So we cut to basketball game, Booth and Scott Stard are watching him play and the you know, he he walks her home. They've known each other since they were six years well, old. Before we get to that, we do cut outside and his dad's playing basketball with Booth. Which yep. is really odd. And he's he kind of looks at his son like, hey. And it's, it's but you can really totally see. Weird no, you can here. totally see what's happened. Why here. she so come over hap- to play with his dad? So what's happened here is she's come over to say, Mr. Howard, 
I need some advice from you. She might have a father figure in her life. We don't. It doesn't seem like she has. Yeah. I need some advice from you. And he's like, what is it, Booth? I've known you since you were six. You and my son have grown up together. And she would have probably said, I'm in love with Scott. But he only sees me as a friend. Like, I probably shouldn't be telling you all of this because you're his dad. But what do you think? Suddenly, Scott walks into the yard. And he says, walk her home, son. Walk her home. And she sa- he says, no, I've just got here and I'm tired. And he says... Scott, don't be rude. Walk her home. Mm. And then he kind of winks at his son a bit like, go on. Mm. And Boo says, thanks, Mr. Harris. Thanks for all your advice. Thanks for everything you told me today. And he says, anytime, Boo, you know where I am. Okay. So he's done his fatherly advice thing. Uh-huh. Even yeah. even manages to get a three-point shot when he turns around. He did, actually. I thought it was like, that's not too bad, is it? <laughs> Good lad. I was got um, it recently. I was just like, great, the basketball hoops open up again. I, I, I've got one just down there. And um, not that anyone can see that. I don't know why I just pointed. Just <laughs> and the other day, I was like, I was, the other day to the kids, I was like, let me get my basketball um, pump, and I'll just pump up my basketball, put put it in to pump it up, and it just let it down, and the, the thing just broke away in front of me. So it just made my ball go. I was like, well, we're not playing basketball. That is a metaphor, isn't it, Gav, for, for your mid forties? <laughs> You're all excited to go and do something. You pump it all up, get ready to go. And, and it just, just goes... breaks in front of me and just <laughs> deflates. Actually, oh, that's yes, not at all. Sim- that is not at all, Sam. I am, I am like a 17-year-old kid. Don't worry about it. Right. You don't. You, you go about this every time. <laughs> every time. Like I said, the wind blows. I know. You, you've under-explained that. So Scott walks her home and they have a chat. And she, she doesn't have the guts to fully go through with whatever advice... Scott's dad said to her, but she does say, Scott, I want you to know something. I'm always here. No matter what you're going through, no matter what changes you're going through, I'm here for you. And he, he realizes, you know what? She's, she's always been there for me. That's nice. That's the end of that. Cut to the basketball game back at school. Here we go. So Pam's there. Booth's watching as well. Uh, this, this Scott... Is... Oh, no, it's not. I was about to say, this is the main ending. Oh, no, it's not. We've got the whole fucking dance yet. Saturday Night Fever oh. shit going on. Um, so <clears throat> Scott Scott remembers his dad's words, which was, if you use it correctly, you can do a lot of things the other guys can't do. So he gets a free throw, and he channels the wolf, and he just keeps it under control, and he shoots, and he scores. Boom! In there. So, you know, he's, that's so good. That's good. Um, however... Straight after that, he gets knocked over, and we get a pile on, and we hear. Uh, and everyone gets knocked back. And this is the bit you were talking about: intimidating, really hairy guy. You never see a werewolf in shorts and a vest normally, do you? Either. Not really. And it's one of those things you, you, you probably don't generally when you when your kids and you're a kid in the class and one of your classmates playing basketball turn into a wolf in front of you. The whole the whole the shocked audience uh, uh, and his fellow classmates aren't that shocked. They're just kind of silenced. But he just carries on bouncing the ball, looking at him for a while. And it's such a weird scene because it's just like, well, we know that this guy doing this, but it is kind of weird. And he does look intimidating as this hairy creature because you see a lot of but he does these, He does these insane skills where he bounces it through one leg and out the other, back round, back round, back round. And then he just goes, and he sort of screams, runs, and does this amazing slam dunk. Yeah. And they all look like, then he looks to the ref and the ref says, play on! And they all go, yeah! He spins it. He spins it on his end of his finger now. Yeah, and then, then that's well. the end of it. Um, and so everyone just goes, yeah, great, he's a werewolf, and they just carry on the game. I was a little bit, you know, it's a movie, to be fair, um, but I would be more, like, surprised. Should we, what, we're just going to play with this werewolf? So everyone is a little freaked out initially. The only one that's super freaked out is Principal Thorn. He seems to cover his groin, and that's because we'll find out later on he has a habit of pissing himself in front of werewolves, which we find a bit more about later on. Oh, shit. Cause, oh, well, I, I know where we're going with this. No, I missed it. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, we get a montage now of Scott completely slam dunking. We could call balls, it a Slam left, right, and centre. A mon ball. A mon ball or a ball targe. Ball targe sounds okay. better. A basketball tage. A ball tage, though, does sound like a torture device from the 1500s. Oh, he's put him in the ball tage. Oh. So, 
we get this brilliant scene now where he's now the king of the world. He's carried into this burger joint on everyone's shoulders. The cool shoulders girl's there. interested in him, sits next to him. What? Why is she, so there. she's just interested in him because he's now popular. Yep. Oh, what a shallow, shallow. What woman. a bitch. What a twat. And there's a brilliant bit where um, somebody says, "Hey Scott, how do you feel?" And Styles touches him because he feels like a winner. And then he grabs a can on its side, a can of like Pepsi, and he looks over at Pamela, and then he, he just bites into it with his fangs, and it sprays out on either side. And that is just one of the coolest moments when he does that. I was like, man, this guy is fucking cool. I cut, want to be a werewolf. Cut to a school corridor, and he's cool walking through, going bottles. Everybody, everybody now accepts him as the cool High dude. Fives. He's in the college newspaper, the school newspaper. He's just super cool. He um he walks past that black dude who's like in like breakdance gear and he sort of goes up to him and sort of goes pops and locks and then the black guy starts popping and locking next to him and then Team Wolf goes down on the floor and sort of spinning on his head and does a windmill and flips back up. It's like he can do all this shit now because he's a werewolf. Vice Principal says to him though, I'm still the boss. He says, No worries, that's fine. Also, unfortunately, <clears throat> his best friend Lewis so it's him, Styles, and Lewis. Lewis seems to really be afraid of him. Mm. So this drug habit, if it was that that we're talking about, is pushing friends away from him because they don't like this other side of him, this aggressive, overconfident side of him. Mm. Okay. They don't like that. They want the original Scott back. Okay. So, okay. again, you've got that metaphor. Well, well, we've got to think when this movie was written, it's funny enough, it was written when there's obviously cocaine is very... It was everybody who was making films around this time it was on coke, and it wasn't even a, uh, a hidden secret. But then also, you did have, did have also the AIDS come into uh, the forefront of uh, people's knowledge, you know, minds and minds. Yes, um, AIDS was about as well. Obviously, um, at the time, they looked upon it as more of a illness uh, of certain people's sexuality choices, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, not really, you know. Um, so, but I don't think it was. But I think you're probably more right in this being. A, as I write my nose, I can, I'm trying to signal you to do some coke <laughs> in the toilet. Right. Oi, dang, come over right. here, let's do some coke in the toilet. Oi. Um, yeah, um, I think you're probably right with the coke thing, drugs. I'm, I, I, it, not necessarily coke, but it's the drug that makes everybody confident. It, it's coke. Um, it would be coke. Absolutely. Yeah. What else is? It? What other drugs are it going to be? Seriously, it's not going to be. It. it could be fucking acid or fucking weed. What would be it? the monster if you were to, zombies? <laughs> It'd be a zombie film if it was about a weed metaphor. What if you got different drugs like zombies? You put them on different drugs. Imagine a coked up zombie. Jesus, twenty days later. Fucking hell. How about fucking an acid death. acid case zombie? I don't want to know. I don't want to know about that. <laughs> oh, so man. Scott, Scott's becoming crackhead, a really crackhead big zombie. Head. Crackhead. Yeah, go on, crackhead. Crackhead. Scott's becoming a massive big head, and we know this because he starts wearing a headband to the basketball games. And he's t not letting any of his players fucking have a go in the basketball matches, even though a guy who originally was like, guys, pick it up, I'm the only one leading this fucking team, he's now just not even passing to that dude. So it's, it does... I, I'm going more with cocaine, I'm with you on this, I think. He steals it off that guy at one point and scores. Yeah, and, it's, and the guy looks at him like, what are you doing? Like, and that's when it's like, boom, team player. But how many times do you see this in a movie? You know? Yeah. So anyway, later on the next day, he's human. He yeah. comes to school as human. Stars has merch, wolf merch. He's got wolf merch. He's got a T-shirt that says Trying "Wolf to make Buddy" some on fucking it. Fucking dollar dollar bill, yo. I want a T-shirt that says "Wolf Buddy" on it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We could be wolf buddies, can't we? Wolf Buddy. He's yeah. He's selling all this merch or these T-shirts to these people. Um, you know, Pamela buys one. Um, next thing you know, he's in the play. The, He's in the play. Pamela says to him, oh, the teacher wants you to be in the play. And he's like, well, I don't really act. She's like, yeah, but she... So he turns up on the stage and the teacher says, what are you doing? Uh, I want the wolf. So he comes up on stage. He's crap at acting, but because he's a werewolf, everyone wants him in the play. Okay, that's great. Backstage, After the rehearsal, though, again, I had to check, is this a PG? Oh, it is a PG. Okay, don't worry about this, Daisy. Yeah, they're about to just have sex. Gav, when I was 10 years old... This scene meant a lot to me. Okay, tell me more. Well, no, it's just, I mean, there was stuff going on that I was, <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't understand, but I understood, if you know what I mean. 
I, basically, I, my kids Pam, are a little bit shocked again by this. Basically, Pamela says to him, come backstage. And he, so he, he, go, he walks yeah. in the room and she just takes off her top. Yeah. Now, she's not topless, but she's, she's got a bra and underwear. All underwear, but we see the bra and the pants. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she starts kissing him. And, well, next thing you know, she just says, you are an animal. Yeah. And then you hear, and then you hear. A howl. A howl. <laughs> you hear a howl. Does that mean, is that what he does when he comes, do you think? Is, has he got, like, a hairy cock? Is he, Probably. Is he doing wolf style instead of doggy style? You know, oh, he wolf what, yeah. what, what, is she actually like getting on with a wolf? That's, Why not? Is that like bestiality or something? Funny story about wolves. They've got a. At least you didn't have a funny story about bestiality. Go on, whoop. Wolves, I think cocks, um, cocks, I think dogs might as well, but wolves' penises are slightly uh, crooked so that after they have sex, they can't take them out of the female's vagina for hours. So they have to sort of lie there till it goes down. Why? I don't know. It's just nature. What if you want to get... Oh, I want to go home. You can't. You've got to stay well, you have to wait. So, suddenly, he's on a date with Pam. They've gone bowling together. He's getting all the strikes because he's a werewolf. And he's just boned her and the boyfriend steps up. Wow, so she, she, that's her boyfriend, but she's still dogging around with a wolf. She in front of him, they have like a real tongue sandwich kiss right in front of Mick. Mick is fuming, as you can imagine, in this bowling alley. And his buddies are like, leave it alone, it's not worth it, it's not worth it. And he sort of he holds it in as long as he can until Pamela tries to do it bowl and then Scott walks up behind her and gently puts his werewolf hand on her big butt and sort of strokes her butt right in front of Mick and Mick loses his shit and he comes over and he says to him, he basically says to him, I know about people like you. I shot your mother in the head when she's stealing chickens out the backyard one night. And basically he says, your mother was a wolf, a dog, a fox, whatever you want to say. Insult Scott's dead mum, basically. Scott throws a bowling ball <laughs> across the bowling alley. It goes flying through the air. You don't see it. You just hear it hit. And you hear, that's like the first sign of the great power, great responsibility that his dad was talking about because... You've got all this like skill and strength, but if you're not careful, you're going to kill someone. You've got to be careful with this cocaine, Gav. Indeed. I mean, being I mean, being a werewolf. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so he gets called a freak, and you know, it's, that's 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 how it goes. Walks Pamela home. Ironically, she blows him off. What happens, Gav? He walks her to her front door. And he says, so, should I see you again tomorrow? Should we go to the the dance together? She's like, well, no, no. And he said, God, Mick. Mick's crazy, isn't he? She's like, well, you can't blame him. I mean, he is my boyfriend. Yeah, she and he blow- says, what? Yeah, she blows him off. Ironically, she was the one blowing him earlier. And now she's blowing him off. It's like, what? So she did all that, but she's still with Mick. But so she just wanted to have sex with the popular. How does that, how much low self-esteem does this girl have? To know that she just about. had to have sex with the most popular person. Just yeah. to make her feel better. Like, wow, you've got some issues. <laughs> I love um, the fact... Go on. I was going to say, we get a little montage now of this, the team getting sick of Scott in the locker room afterwards. None of them want to... Do you guys want to hang out after the, today's game? No, none of them want to hang out with him because he's hogging the ball. And the coach tries to say to him afterwards, like, you know, he, he, like, I've got certain rules. I love the fact one of his rules was never date a lady who has a dagger tattoo. Sarah, Sarah's got a dagger tattoo, but then again, I've got a matching one with her. But, yeah. He also says, never never um, date a woman. No, uh, never play poker with a guy who's got the same first name as a city. Yeah. That's two of his three life life rules. That's hilarious. Yeah. That coach is pretty funny, actually. It is right. There's one point earlier on where Scott comes in to talk to you. He's like, can I talk to you? And he's like, hey, come into, come into my office. Mikasa Sukasa, you can talk to me about anything. As soon as he gets a hint that Scott's got a real problem that he wants to talk to me, he goes, look, man, I haven't got time for any of this. I should be asking to borrow money from you. You know what I mean? I've got the IRS up my ass. I, I can't do anything for you right now. Come on, get out of my office. He's such a dick. <laughs> but he's a good, he's a funny actor. I like him. Yeah. So yeah, Scott goes outside and Styles is there and he says... Styles is still his mate. He says, I've traded in my old car for this van. He says, why the fuck have you done that? He says, well, 
Have a look what's on the side of it. What does it say on the side, Cap? Um, Wolfmobile? <laughs> it does. It says Wolfmobile. Yeah. And he says, I'm going to surf. And just as he jumps up, Scott grabs him and says, these are my waves. And we get another montage of surfing USA with Scott surfing, doing backflips and handstands. And at one point they drive past Scott's dad's store and he sort of sees them and he's not happy about it, obviously. Yeah. And uh, he, he sort of says, when he gets home, he says, do you have a good time today, son? And he's like, yeah, I had a really good time. We went out with Styles. And he said, yeah, I saw that. Unless that was another werewolf doing a, a handstand on top of <laughs> Styles' wolf <wolf-mobile." laughs> And he says, to him, look, you've got to be careful, son. There are going to be people that don't like you. And he said, how's Thorn treating you? And he said, oh, he's been really nasty to me, actually. And he explains the reason for it, which is that they all went to school together. Scott's mum, Scott's dad, and Principal Thorn. And Scott's mum and dad were childhood sweethearts. But for some reason, Thorne decided he liked Scott's mum as well. And he really kept trying to split them up and split them up. And one night, he got a bit too, not rapey, but he got a bit full on with Scott's mum. And it meant that Scott's dad had to bring the wolf out. Scott says, man, I wish I could have been there to see that. What happened? And his dad just says... He lost control of all of his bodily functions. <laughs> it's just... He says, so that's the reason he's giving you a hard time. Yeah. It's because of me. Uh, he's got a grudge against me. So, pretty cool backstory. Liking that. Saturday Night Fever montage. Put the white suit on, getting ready for the discotheque. He gets the, uh, he gets the hair dryer out, doesn't he? The blow dryer on his face. I love that track. Such a good song. I put, I, oh, when I DJ at weddings or anything like that, fucking as soon as I put that on, you get everyone dancing. Um, I, I love that. He gets there and he says, uh, he gets there and Boo says, he says, do you want to dance with the wolf? She says, no, I, I told you I'd only dance with Scott. And he says, come on, just one dance with the wolf. And he's got his own soundtrack song lined <laughs> yeah. up with the DJ. Yeah. Um, I love You're a it. big bad wolf. I can't get enough the, big this, bad this, wolf. This, I think this is a song that I like, and it's even got the uh, the ro- 80s robot voice going on. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, it's fucking well good. And they keep doing this like thriller sort of hand movements up in the air, don't they? Like, oh man, bah, that's so cheesy. Bah. When he goes into it and he starts doing the hands up, I was just like, oh, that just looks so, such a bad move. It really is. But everyone's doing it. They of think he's dope, they and they all follow him. Stars has got his wolf buddy T-shirt on at the disco, um, you know. Uh, and Booth says, "Come with me. Come with me." She takes him off outside. She has a little kiss with him. And he turns back into Scott. And that's because, you know, he's genuinely happy with what he's got here. He doesn't need to be the wolf at this point. He's put the cocaine down. He's happy with Boof. Yeah. And she says, come inside just as you are. So he goes back into the dance hall as a human. And people don't notice him. They don't, they're ignoring him. No one cares about him. This is the come down now. And this is when the the boyfriend calls him a freak as well. This is where Mick says, he goes over, he just gives him a straight sucker punch and says, stay away from my girlfriend, you freak. Um, and, and that, of course... Like I said, goes outside, beavers our best, punches the wall, all that stuff. He rips um, Mick's shirt open. Yeah, he goes outside and uh, Principal Thorne says, I've been waiting for a long time to get you in this position, Scott. And not only are you going to be suspended, you're going to be expelled from this school for what you've done tonight. And then suddenly you hear, go home, son. And you turn around and dad's there. Good old dad's turned up. And he he says, go home, son. Go and get some rest. Go to bed. And he says, oh, Thorn, you never learn, do you? When will you learn not to pick on me or my family, eh? And uh, he says, stay away from me. And he just leans forward to him and just growls. And then he looks down at him and says, I'm glad you didn't let me down, Thorne. And obviously, he's completely pissed himself. <laughs> it's just so good. I, I love, absolutely love it. I hope I get this opportunity at some point and I have to go up to my, my, my kids say, go, go home, son, go home. And I go up to someone and, and uh, I can growl at them. <sighs> my dad did, did something not anywhere like this, but similar 
when I was at secondary school because we had a PE teacher that, that used to just beat us up, basically. He was really Weird, isn't physically... it? We had that stuff. I had a PE teacher who sat opposite the, uh, the bit where as soon as you came out of the shower, he was sitting there to be able to see you naked. Yeah. He used to throw footballs at us in the shower. That was a really weird place to sit. Why don't you sit... If I was a PE teacher, I wouldn't sit there where I could see them coming out of the shower. Why would you we... do that? If we were taking too long, this PE teacher would come in the shower and throw a football or a soccer ball at us really hard against our naked skin. 80 while we were scoring, to... man. It wasn't good. Oh. But anyway, this teacher used to just bully us and beat us up, especially the little kids like me, because I, I didn't have a growth spurt for years. And my dad kind of knew about this, and you know, he knew that we'd been pushed about and even like shoved and slapped on the back of the head a few times. So at parents' teacher's evening, my dad came along, and he's... Mr. S- Mr. I won't say his name actually, came up to my dad and said, "Oh, you're you're Daniel Bones, dad, are you?" And my dad's like six foot three and a half and said, "I am." And who are you? And I said, "This is my PE teacher." And my dad shook his hand and I could see my dad squeeze his hand really hard, and I could see that a little wince in the PE teacher's face, just a little like, oh. and after that he. He eased off a little bit on me after that. Hmm. And I always thought that was because my dad did a real squeeze on his hand. <laughs> so thanks, thanks, Dad, for that. He didn't turn into a werewolf and make him piss himself, Gav. Would have been good. That would have been good. Would have made a good story. Very good. But uh, there we go. So Thorne, yeah, that's Thorne there for you. Uh, so Turns up the game. Well, we, the school play, he quits the school play because he says, if I if I can't be me, then I don't want to do it. And they're like, well, then don't do it because we only want the werewolf. Again, that lesson. Final game, you're right. So they're losing. Scott turns up a bit late as a human. And they say, well, I knew you wouldn't, you'd wouldn't. you let us down. Why can't you be the wolf? And he's like, look, we can do this without the wolf. Come on. And it's very, very strange that this whole film, the finale of it is no werewolf at all. And very brave I think, and, and a very important part of the message is to be yourself. They could have had, you You would have expected this film's finale to be him winning everything as a werewolf, but instead, he does it all as a human. He brings the team together. And they, they smash it. They win the game just, you know, a few points in it, but they manage to do it. And we get a lovely slow motion scene with the credits rolling. This is and they've won. a song over this game. It's a song that I like, by the way. <laughs> That song is so good. He says, um, oh, I can't remember how it goes. Win again. Win in the end. That's what it's called. Win in the end. It just has such an 80s feel to it. And it's brilliant. And then, of course, we've got the famous Dick hanging out, one of the extras in the seats. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you look carefully behind Booth and Styles and that. I'm glad the, I didn't point this out to my kids. As it slows down, you can see what looks like a penis hanging out someone's trousers. Actually, it turns out that was a female background actor but the way her trousers and everything were lying it looked strange oh. basically she'd been sat down so long she undid her uh, her jeans because she was sort of sat down for so long doing all these takes and then stood up right at the end when they said right everybody get up and cheer and action and then she realized that her, un- her everything was hanging out so she had to quickly tuck herself back in but there was a rumor started by family guy mainly that there was a dick in the background at the end of team wolf amazing i wish it had been but that's the end. Scott is a human, probably will become a wolf now and again for, uh, you know, when, when he needs to be. So, he probably ends up with Booth. So what message are we saying this film is given? It depends what you want to take from it, really. I've written here at the end of mine, drugs, question mark, puberty, question mark. And you've said coming out of the closet, question mark. There's so many things. Hmm. It's an interesting film. It's very interesting to look now. I, I'm... Don't plan on watching it again. No offence. I know it's your birthday movie. Um, it's all right. You know, it's okay. You say there's a sequel. I've not seen it. Have you seen it? Yeah, I have, certainly. It's uh, his cousin, um, who's Hilliard. a werewolf as well. It's all right. Is his dad in it? Uh, I think he might be, actually. It makes sense to time in. I think he is, actually. Um, and Jason Bateman, instead of um, being a basketball player, he's a boxer this time. So he wolfs out. And he boxes people, which isn't very fair. I wouldn't want to box with a werewolf. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I want to box with a werewolf. They take your head off. Um, it's all right. It's, it's nowhere near as good as this. This is a real cult classic. Hmm. Um, well, silly well, old well, 80s. Both of these films are very much cult classics you've ch- chosen. Um, 
would I recommend it? Well, it depends who to, really. Um, I'm not going to re- recommend it to a hardcore horror fan who's never seen it. Very true. Um, I wouldn't even really think of this as a horror movie so much. Not really. Uh, it's like a supernatural teen comedy. Yeah, it's I would a fun say monster that. film, but it's yeah, it's more of it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously, it's a thumbs up for me. Um, how did you enjoy it this time around, Gav? Like I said, couldn't remember it. The Teen Wolf surfing is all I can remember. Um, yeah, like I said, I enjoyed it for the culturalness of the time. It was a very, very good indication of, of a, 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 a world at a certain place. Well, America at a certain time and place. Um, I found it quite interesting to watch now, especially as we're so woke. I don't know you like that word. But we're so sort of more awake to what's going on and what's wrong and what's right. And I found it interesting for that. But there's the other parts of it as well, which I found interesting. I, I, I thought the makeup was really good. I thought um, I enjoy Michael J. Fox, always have done. Um, I enjoyed it. It was all right. It was a fun Sunday movie to kind of watch on projector with the kids who ignored it and sat with their fucking tablets <laughs> in front of their faces. Um, it was fun for that. But like I said, wouldn't do it again. It was, it was fun. It was fun. I, no offence, I enjoyed it more than I did Labyrinth. So, Fair enough. Mm. Well, there we go. There is Team Wolf with Michael J. Fox. A uh, thumbs up from me. A thumbs up from Gav, although you might not watch it again. It's, but... a, it's a wolfy thumbs up from me, but I'm not going to recommend it to anyone. So, It's a howling good fun. Yeah, that's what I would say. It's all right. Okay, cool. Well, Gav, it's time for my birthday travel through the time tunnel. Do we have to be in birthday suits to be in the time tunnel this time? You read my mind. I knew you were going to say that. Well, I didn't on, bring get... my birthday suit with me. Oh, I'm not going to get away with that, am I? No, your birthday suit means take that off. That's it. All of it. Oh. There we go. Right. Let's now get into naked. this time machine. Am I right to sit down here or do you want to put any sheeting down? No, you're fine. They're white free seats anyway. Every seat in here is white free. I don't want to pebble, so pebble dash it or anything. Oh, the pebble. The rocks. <laughs> the rock the rock and the pebble. Double. The oh, pebble dash. Me and, me and the rock. The rock and the pebble. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm the boulder. Rolling around. All right, then. Well, let's get into this machine. You ready for this? Let Indeed. me press these couple of levers. And we are off. Oh, whoa. whoa. What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your yeah. time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be... The Time Team. The Time Team. Whoa. Whoa. What's this? Look at that. Look at that. Well, he's been dead a hundred years. Look at that. Look at that. That's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand. Oh, there's a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that. It's something else. <laughs> oh. Oh, that was a bit smoother than last time. Well, it's my birthday. So, 2012, Gav. 2012. Shadow of Death come out. Yep, Shadow of Death. That's. Um, I was being a dad. Um, yeah, basically. This was the year that the Mayans, the Mayan calendar said the world would come to an end. When? 2012. Oh, it didn't, I did it. <laughs> no, it didn't, because we're still here. Because, mainly because their calendars just stopped at 2012, so everybody's assumed, well, if the Mayans have stopped making calendars that go up to 2012, then th- we're probably all going to die. No, they just didn't bother going past it. No, they just didn't bother. It's like a weird version of the Millennium Bug, but up 500 years ago, that's all. Yeah. Nothing to worry about. So things that happened this year, the Queen of England, Gavin, Queen Elizabeth II, mm-hmm. celebrated her Diamond Jubilee which meant she'd spent 60 years on the throne at that point. Blimey. She is one of the longest-running monarchs in history because she's still on the throne right now as we speak. Now, there are a couple of... There, it will probably go on as the years go on. There will probably be people who are even longer because of just the advent of medical resources, technology, etc., etc. Longer life. Longer life batteries, sure as hell. Longer life milk. UHT. This was the year that there was a terrible cinema screening of The Dark Knight Rises in Colorado. Oh, because yeah, a man dude, opened fire. His face green, didn't it? Uh, his hair green, and 
he shot and killed 12 people and injured another 58 people in the during cinema. the screening of The Dark Knight Rises. And I think I remember the gangster squad was supposed to be coming out and had to be cancelled off the cinema and not be released and all these sorts of films and because of this. And security stepped up loads, I remember. Like, it, it, we, we didn't have it over here such uh, in England, but and I remember seeing on news in America there's fucking... Loads of people with security, guns and shit, like, you know, uh, like at the cinema. And that's just such a crazy, crazy thing. Yeah. I was, so, was... Well, I was, was so intimidated when I first saw a gun on a policeman in America, like, many, many moons ago. A bit, I was literally like, oh, my God, there's a gun. Oh, my God, there's a gun. It's probably like the first time I'd ever seen a gun. I was like, oh, my God. Freaked me out. Also, unfortunately, this year, there was another very well, well documented shooting. Um, in Sandy Hook Elementary School yeah. in Connecticut, 26 people were killed. So this is, um, these were both 2012, these events. And this was mainly children in this one. Yeah. it's. Uh, it was the highest body count in a shooting at this point. And they're all mainly kids, it, little kids. It's... There's no point in even attempting to do for two English guys not living in the same country to attempt to talk about guns and this. Of course it's, not, it's, no. it's, it's just absolutely. But like, death caused from it is just a tragic thing, and it's a shame that nothing really can be done because that was 2012. It's not like it's changed, has it? It's got worse, Gav, if anything. Unfortunately, um, yeah, because nothing can be done. It's too. What too blows my mind, and our American listeners will, will feel exactly the same way, is. I can't understand how there can be gun train, like, you know, shootout training, like drills, where they run drills for children in schools in America because this is such a common thing. It's quite a scary it kind of thing my mind, it? to be, you know, uh, being at school, you knowing at any moment that that could actually happen. Like, that's insane. Absolutely yeah. insane. Um, but unfortunately, too much guns in circulation, I think, is the issue, and it'll never be resolved. You, too many wider people have dis- different opinions who are very strong in either side. It's 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 too a large country and uh, too large scale all round, really, isn't it? Unfortunately. Well, let's get into some upbeat things because Obama was re-elected for his second term this year. I didn't mind Obama. He's all right. He's all right, isn't he? Yeah, he's not bad. He's doing all right. Yeah. People liked him. Yeah. Um, better than that orange thing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he, he got re-elected for his second term. That was pretty decent. Technology-wise... I was going to uh, say, Orange inst- definitely wasn't the new black for, orange <laughs> for the presidency, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ. I'm not sure if I should be laughing at that joke, but I'm going to anyway. Well, well, well it's not like... A, I'm not saying it's a horrible joke, but he was Orange, wasn't he? And, and, um, orange black, was black, the black. It, Why it was, have we never heard that before? I don't know. That is brilliant. You're a genius. Yeah. So... <laughs> Technology-wise, Windows 8 dropped this year. Just another Windows. There we go. Nothing interesting. Uh, Instagram became available on Android. It was a, an Apple thing mainly, and then it oh, suddenly really? it's on Android. And Facebook goes public this year, and you could buy a piece of Facebook for uh, fifty-five dollars, uh, thirty-eight dollars. Sorry. Oh, sure. Wow, I bet that's good. That those shares now would be all right, wouldn't they? It's probably quite good now, aren't they? I look into quite good. shares, and the only unfortunate thing with shares is that, uh, to get to get your portfolio up to scratch is you have to lose a lot of money before you start making money and have to be in it for really long term and look at it all the time. And I was like, fuck that, that's way too much work. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even, g- even going to go there. I looked into it and I was like, I'm not going there. It's too much, it's too much. We also said goodbye to Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon, mm. who was 82, and he died this year. So there we go. Um, TV shows, just to let you know what was going on. We had um, Homeland. I never saw a single episode of that. No, I've not seen it. It's, one day I will get yeah. back to some of these shows and go, oh, I'm going to watch that one with the prison break. That's on my Netflix list at the moment. It's like, oh, I'll get to that. Um, who else died this year? Well, I'm sorry to say Donna Summer died this year. Oh, disco queen. Was, and another queen died this year, a diva, in fact. Whitney Houston in the bathtub. 
with the crack. That's just sad, because then her daughter went the same way. And it's just like, well, that's so sad. Because of it's incredibly sad. Bloody Ghostbuster singing Bobby Brown. It's no, he was a terrible and influence, wasn't he? We talked about Amy Winehouse last episode, because that was 2011, and, and we were talking about, and they're very similar, but incredible voices, absolutely incredible talents, one in a million really, when you think of their voices. Mm. And they both went the same way, down a terrible, dark path with drugs. Mm. And it's a real shame, really. Um, you know, both very different musicians, but also very powerful voices as well. Unfortunately, some drugs are not very good for you. No, no, not at all, Gavin. You're <laughs> as Team Wolf has just told us, really. Mm. Werewolf cocaine. Oh, imagine that. Werewolf cocaine. You sort of do it and you go, Wolf cane. Yeah. Who got us some of that wolf cane? Give me some of that wolf cane, man. I don't know why I sound like so, Clint Eastwood doing it, though. Tell you what. Uh, right, let's have a look. Cane. What films came out this year? Well, there's a great documentary that came out this year, which kind of ties into horror, but it was Room 237. I'm a big fan of that documentary. That came out in 2012. Mm. Do you like that? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I've got to be honest, I fell asleep towards the end of it and I don't know what how, how it ended up. It was just because uh, it's quite a hypnotic movie. When you're watching it, all the stuff going on in it and stuff, and all the different yeah. theories, you start to sort of zone out. <laughs> no, I don't think I ever got back to watching it, to be honest with you. Obviously, Dark Knight Rises came out this year, as we've talked about. There was a tragic incident at the cinema with that, so that was another one that came out, the last Nolan movie. Um of the dot of the um the Batman films. Um other films that came out this year? Uh John Carpenter of Mars, huge flop, famous huge flop. If we look at what was popular, Gav, so the number one film this year was also one of the highest uh, grossing films of all time still, and that was The Avengers, the first Avengers film. I saw this in the cinema. Everybody it. rushed to see it. Didn't need any more. I was quite happy with just that. We'd seen the Hulk, we'd seen Iron Man, I Captain was, America, was, Thor. I'd, honestly, you'd be happy with me. I was excited to see this because I was like, wow, I want to see all these guys team up. I didn't need four of them. And when I, wa- when I watched the fourth one, didn't realise it was a fourth one. I forgot to tell you this. Watched the fourth one, I'm sitting there, and then they said, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? I had to look back and I was like, oh, there was a third. And I've seen it. And I don't remember one thing from that movie. And then I was watching fourth and I don't remember one thing from that movie either. The first, though... I enjoyed that. Don't need any more. Good. Well, that one came out. So the superheroes were number one grossing film of 2012 was The Avengers. Number two was The Dark Knight Rises. Mm. Um, Hunger Games came out this year, the very first one. Um, James Bond was out this year with Skyfall. Skyfall. (laughs) Really? Oh, I love that. That's my Adele Um, impression. Ted came out this year. If you're interested in a bit of Mark Wahlberg. I, right. I did stand up against a, a big PEP in cardboard cutout at a cinema where you pretend you're standing with the bear at the toilet, you Arnold. I'm not got a photo off me <laughs> doing that. I love that. Uh, Men in Black Three came out this year with um, a James uh, Josh Brolin doing an incredible a Tommy, Tommy Lee Jones. Jones impression. It's really fucking it's, good. Like literally the best like, thing I've is, seen is, is so Tommy good. Lee Jones when he's younger. Like you know, he except, except he didn't really have the he didn't have that. the face for the uh, for the volcano. No, lava. he's not craggy didn't enough. have lava face. Craggy, craggy volcano lava face. <laughs> um, Taken he, he's two not going to come on the show year. for an interview, is he? No, he's not. Taken 2 came out this year. This year, is a, this is the one I bought my daughter, a karaoke machine. Is that the one where he buys a karaoke machine at it the beginning? It would be. And he's like, he turns up at the party. I've bought you a karaoke machine. I've bought you a karaoke machine. bought me a karaoke machine, Dad, like... And then I thought we could sing, some sing some songs together. Kumbaya. And then um, <laughs> and then he got Taken Three, which is just made or taken back to the fucking shop because I don't want to watch it. Also this year we got um, Twenty One Jump Street, which people love. I fucking love, love it, film. man. I've got, I it's own great. Twenty One and Twenty Two Jump Street on Blu-ray. They're fucking amazing. My name's Jeff. Uh, part two, but <laughs> I love that bit. My name's Jeff. My name's Jeff. Elijah does it to me all the time. Me and Lloyd just wander around the house going, "My name's Jeff." We got um, Django Unchained, bit of Tarantino action this year as well. Not, not, 
much of a fan of that film. Yeah. Expendables 2 came out this year. Oh, shit. So the, probably the, the best one. I watched it the other week again. Loved it. I loved it. In fact, Jean-Claude is the, uh, the big baddie. We had a, a Hobbit movie, a Twilight movie, the Amazing Spider-Man movie. We had a few other films popping up here and there. So it's a good, good little selection kicking around at the mainstream cinema. But we're here for horror, aren't we, Gav? Mm. Horror. Horrific, horrific films, please tell me. Okay, 2012, Prometheus. Oh, I went to the cinema for three years. I love Prometheus. We've discussed it. We've yeah, talked about it. We've it's done great. it on an Easter special. I think it's a fantastic film. Mm. Uh, I know there's some people who don't like it, but I thoroughly enjoy it. I like all the actors in it. Um, I like the movie. It feels like um, a sequel, but also it a very... It almost feels like its own thing, though, doesn't it? It feels like a, a remake, in a way, but I, mm. but I allow it. Oh, Do you know absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, it's a great movie. I wish there was almost a Prometheus 2. It was supposed to be, wasn't there? Well, we got Alien Covenant, but... Yeah, but... Uh... It's really I'd weird, like to know more they were, about they the were engineers. Supposed to, they were supposed to do Alien Covenant, and I think they're going to do another Alien After Covenant, and then it came back up to Prometheus 2 or something. So it's like, what are you doing? Like, you, you, like, it's taking too long. It takes a long time to make films. It's a good three years to get movies right from up and going to out and release. It's like, that's crazy. Like, why just get on with Prometheus 2? <laughs> it's a good film. Stop going I'd back. Rather watch, I'd rather watch another Alien vs. Predator done well. Yeah, because I've never watched that Alien Corner again. It's over there in my DVD pile to get rid of. I was just like... Oh, really? Yeah, after we did... After we, um... We we did it, didn't we? I just don't yeah, know, we did I it. I don't even yeah. remember it, and we've covered it, you know? Like... Okay. Well, Elijah Wood dropped a little horror movie on us this year. The Maniac remake. All POV. Point of view. Yeah. Really interesting take on the film i watched it and it, it, i love elijah wood the fact that he's formed this horror company of two two buddies and he's still doing producing and occasionally he just does a bit have you seen wilfred the tv show he made where he's his mate's a dog talking dog. i've seen one episode of it and i didn't really get it but it's not to say i didn't enjoy it i just didn't really get it's it it's not bad sir and i were watching it and uh we did fizzle out of it we knew we probably will get back to it at some point it was kind of enjoyable it's not amazing it's all right though well last episode we talked about mumblecore and how that was up, up and coming so we had a, a, our oh, first mumblecore anthology this year vhs yes correct i picked up the other day i done it again i got me a brand new copy on blu-ray of vhs uh, already got me a copy of VHS and Blu-ray, so it's coming in the post to you. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I, I said to Sarah, I said, I think I've already got this one. And uh, there's was like, yeah, I've got this one. That's kind of Dan. So I, I keep my little poll for you, which I occasionally post you a little selection of movies. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, VHS is great, isn't it? And we are going to cover, actually, VHS 1, VHS 2, and VHS... Um, what's the third one called? VHS? Viral. 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 We're going to cover those three for I'm a, an episode. I'm a fan of all them films and I own all of them. Yeah. Another film which came out this year, uh, a found footage film, which I'm a big fan of, Chernobyl Diaries, came out this year. And I'm a real fan of this one. I was thinking about this movie the other day because uh, it was yesterday was the 35th anniversary of Chernobyl. It's Shit. The... Um, so I actually messaged Sarah because uh, if you don't know guys I do a side podcast called the High Strangers Podcast looking at weird things and I actually said to her can we do a Chernobyl episode and she said I'd love to so I said splendid and that's how that went lovely hmm. yeah Chernobyl, it's a good, good a, film mum what a crazy thing Chernobyl like that whole thing just insane you look at the pictures down it's just like they've just left and they will never go back there and it's just like that's a place completely lost in time which will never ever ever change so weird and parts of the Chernobyl diaries are actually filmed in Chernobyl. They went in and... You can do tours. Uh, it's the sort of thing I think Sarah wants to try and do that. And I was like, oh, you know. That, be. That's what this film's about, isn't it? it they go is. in with it's a couple quite of cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's quite pretty decent. Um, Sinister came out this year. Now, this film really made me jump quite a few times the first few times I've seen it. And I still highly rate I, it. And I know you're a fan of this film. I am a fan of it. I am very much a fan of the Ethan Hawke, the the uh, the cardigan-wearing dude doing his investigations into the late night at a murder house. It's a great idea. I 
dislike the look of the killer thing. It's just like yeah. it just looks shit. It's like why have you ruined it with this? But, it could have been so much more sinister, and it's so cheap and almost like Jigsaw and Saw, which is a fucking bullshit. It is a good splice between the ring and Saw, though, because you it get this like investigative Come on, side. It looks fucking shit. It could be so much no, more scary. Sorry, I, I mean the whole film, though. Um, oh, I mean, okay. Sorry, sorry. I'm about the long, the dark-haired, character, bad character in it. That's yeah, awful. It looks cheap. You know, such but the a shame. plot is a good splice between yeah. Saw and the ring because you know you got this thing that can come and get you via pictures or video. Yeah, but yeah. also you've got this investigative side where he's finding these tapes and they're like the saw moments where something gross is about to happen mm. i'd almost rather these... it was like you didn't see that thing and it's all more alluding to something i'd rather have that I, more i didn't like the sequel as much no no it's like no. no but the first one was good um another fine footage so the fine footage all the rave at the moment the bay came out this year I big fan it. of that one as well yeah i'm a big fan of that. i'm I think I'm probably going to get I think it's to get rid of actually because I've seen it multiple times um, I won't let Jay watch it thinking they wouldn't mind it too much and they were really really almost freaked out by it because of all the insects and things inside the bodies and, all, and I was a bit like oh yeah. okay like the little squirmy things and I was like oh sorry and she is, it actually almost had a bit of a panic <laughs> attack they did and I was like oh shit sorry I didn't realise <laughs> there's me trying to keep the traumatic horrors away from, from them and they go and show you something gives them a panic attack. Well done, Dad. And another fan footage one that came out this year was Grave Encounters 2. And I like these two films, both of them. Yes, I They're do. Very good. I do. And that's really interesting that fan footage was a thing at this point. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this was a, g- a good year for that and Bumblecore as well. But also it was the year that we saw Rob Zombie make a decent film, The Lords of Salem. Yeah, uh, I, even and, have a, I even have a tattoo from the Lords of Salem, <laughs> and it's decent, man. It's it's probably uh, my second favourite, and I probably only really like two of his films, to be honest. Now, yeah, um, I was I was happy it was all right. I had to go on a bit of a mission to find this, and one night I was driving around to different cities to try to find a supermarket that sold it because it wasn't as easy. And I was trying to get in it for some reason. It wasn't anywhere. You couldn't pre-order it on the internet. And I was like, what the hell? I've got to actually hunt for a film. <laughs> found it and I was luckily uh, completely happy with it. The ending's n- not completely how I'd like the ending, but I love the whole feel of the whole movie. It's uh, it's almost a love letter to Rosemary Baby and all that sort of stuff. And you got all those old school people, at Dee Wallace and his witches and stuff. I the really design, like it. Sound design is, is absolutely brilliant and really yeah, original. Song, I really like the song on the record. It's yeah. play. Uh, I need to watch the movie again and really enjoy that film. Uh, and actually, as much as we diss Sherry uh, Moon Zombie... I, um, I think everyone in that film is okay, this. actually. Yeah. yeah. After House of House Corpse, I'll say, yeah, I'm with that one. Yeah. Another good thing that happened this year was that Hammer came back with... The- Tenant, uh, the Revenant, uh, the Woman Resident. in Black. Oh, okay. And, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, the Woman in Black. Oh, yeah, with uh, uh, older Harry Potter. Which is really gothic, creepy. And I re watched this not long ago, actually, thinking bad, I didn't enjoy it the first time. But actually, it's... putting it on and sitting down, I thought, it's all right. It's got that whole. This is really good. It's got that hammer vibe of going to like a, a, a faraway place, one person visiting, and they're kind of stuck in this little village, and don't we know what's going on? It's all right. It really feels like a hammer film. They've it... done a fantastic job of capturing Indeed. it. Indeed, I've not seen the second one. Uh... But yeah. <laughs> This was the year, obviously, if we talked about it, Shadow of Death came out this year, which uh, you directed, I starred in. That, you know, it's... How weird to say that uh, one of the films that came out this year is something that we made. How weird. But also, this was a year that we went to visit our buddies, the Soska Sisters, in Bristol, my hometown, actually, mm. um, when they showed American Mary, which came out this year. Uh, we went and met up with them after on, uh, after the movie, uh, briefly. We got, we got drunk. Uh, we did get drunk, and we tried to chat to them a little bit, but they were... They were probably very jet lagged, and we were just like, Yay. "No, but yeah, I, American I, Mary." I did chat to them. Um, funny you say that, actually. Look, look. Oh, just there. What the fuck? How weird is that? Just there. That's just the cinema ticket from that night. How weird is How that? Strange. I found it out the other day because it says on it, it was filmed, and I was like, "Oh, really?" But yeah, I did chat to them a little bit, uh, Sylvia. Um, around that time and then at the end of it they were just all both a bit 
weird, which is strange, which is mm. really odd, because I chatted to them loads, I sort of popped out for a wee, and I was like, hey, how you doing? And been corresponding for quite a long time uh, on Facebook, a lot of messages back and forth, and then met them, like, hey, blah, blah, blah. and then at the end of it, they were just kind of odd, and then that was it. And <laughs> they were chatting again, so it's like, it's a bit weird, I don't know what happened there. Maybe I smelt funny, maybe I smelt like cheese. <laughs> couple of other random films that came out this year. Abraham Lincoln, The Vampire Hunter. Not a bad film, actually. Have you seen it? Uh, loved it. Oh, saw, really? I saw it once and thought it was brilliant. Yeah. So I did I. I only saw it once, but it was enough. I it enjoyed it. I, I sat down, turned the teddy on, and put the DVD in. I watched the movie. I enjoyed the movie. I, I had I had the fix I needed. Nice one, man. Um, Frank and Weenie came out this year. Yeah, we yeah. touched on that in our last episode. Well, one bit last episode. Um, other films that came out this year. We also got ABCs of Death, another uh, anthology. Mm. It's all right. They're not as good as the a- the VHS films, but they're good. I like the ABCs because you know you're getting a lot. Of- you get a lot, so you know if that one's not very good, you're watching it. It's going to it's soon be on to the next one. I watched it. I saw it once. So I won't watch it again. Wrong turn five, Gav. I, yeah, I don't know. It's not. <laughs> it's not a series I'm going to like the Fast and Furious. That's for sure. Resident Evil Six, Gav. No. <laughs> now there is a film that came out this year which doesn't get talked about a lot, and I think it's fucking hilarious. Mm. And it's called Cockneys vs Zombies, and I absolutely love this film. I would say to you that we can definitely put this on the list to find because something else to go with it because yeah. I only saw it once, but really enjoyed it. How about Scouts versus the Zombie, Scouts Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, and Cockneys versus Zombies? No, it's too close. I don't know. I watched that fairly recently. I don't remember it that much. Uh, I don't know. Let's, let's just let's keep let's keep it. Up. Cockneys is brilliant. It's definitely something I want to I want to go back to at some point. Yeah. Um, and the only other one really of note. Oh well, Paranormal Activity Four. Um. I was going to say Sightseers came out this year, which I, I do like, not as much as some people. Yeah, I'm do not like fans. Sarah fucking loves it and thinks that that's going to be me and her. <laughs> I don't think it's killers, though. Jesus Christ. i tell you what came out this year that I do like, though, is Grabbers. I'm a really big fan of that. That was really funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll give Jamie a shout out here. I do know that she was a fan of Grabbers as well. Back in the day, I remember she mentioned it on Devour the Podcast. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fun movie, actually. And I do remember getting drunk while watching it. <laughs> and that is pretty much oh wreck three but that is pretty much <laughs> did i mention paranormal activity four no i didn't did i no that one as well oh. so I mean, so this year we got footage. a shit ton of fine footage films yeah a little sprinkling of mumblecore you mm. know and hammer came back rob zombie made a good film all in all gav 2012 is a really decent year solid year for horror i would say mm. Nothing, like, groundbreaking, but all solid, enjoyable, fun stuff. What's going to be really interesting is when we get to 2020 and stuff. Yeah. And the cinema being pretty scarce. You know, It'll be like two the odd, films. The odd film, yeah, weird. Um, okay, that's all cool, man. Uh, thanks, for, yeah. thanks for taking us there. Anything else you want to mention while we're here? Well, uh, one other film that I just popped up, actually, the Barbarian Sound Studio. I know you're a big fan of that one, and that uh, came out in 2012. Yeah, it's in my Blu-ray collection. Uh, have you seen it? Yes, I did. I have seen it, and I liked it. Good movie. I, we could, we, I tell you what, though. We could do that movie with, um, what's that, Shadow Homage? The editor. Oh, that's We brilliant. could put those both together. That'd make a really good pairing. Or Blowout. Yeah, I recently watched the movie which inspired from that, which was Blow Up, which is about the photographer in London. Um, uh, and takes photos and witnesses, takes photos of murder. And I watched that recently, and it's really long, and it was quite boring. But that was inspired the Travolta one, the Brian You De Palma. let me blow out, and I thought... Yeah, I'm Brian not De Palma film. Yeah. Well, I thought I'm not going to be interested in this at all. Even though you excitedly told me what it was about, I thought this is going to be boring. I watched it and I was drawn into it and absolutely loved it. Yeah. I'll, so thank you for I'll, that. Yeah, I'll definitely cover that at some point. Uh, we should do a Brian De Palma episode. On the list. It's there right now. 
Sarah watched for the first time the other night the Untouchables, and I said how good it is. She said it was right, oh, but she wouldn't watch it again. I was like, God. what? It's fucking amazing. It is. That film's incredible. For a, a time, that was in my top five of films of all so time. Good. The soundtrack. Sean Connery, Andy Garcia, yeah, you know. Kevin Costner is phenomenal in that film. Yeah, it's just a Niro, fantastic film, yeah, all right. Freedom. But yeah, Sarah was oh. like, yeah, it's all right. I was like, oh, that's a shame. You know. The music. Oh. Mm, I want to watch that again on the old big screen, that's for sure. Right, well, can we get we've out got of to here get back. and do another film? Because yeah. it's time to get into the labyrinth. So let's get back into my time machine. You ready? Yep. Oh. <laughs> TriStar Pictures announces the collaboration of three extraordinary talents. Jim Henson, creator of The Muppets and Dark Crystal. Oh! Where you going with a head like that? Hmm? George Lucas, creator of the Star Wars saga. the most innovative forces in modern entertainment, David Bowie. <laughs> Together, they will take you into a dazzling world of fantasy and adventure. There's nothing to be afraid of. A world where anything seems possible, and nothing is what it seems. Everything I've done, I've done for you. I move the stars for no one. The world of Labyrinth. Okay, so we are back for our second film of my birthday episode my other vhs i bought at the age of about nine or ten and this is labyrinth from 1986 directed by jim henson and i've actually got david bowie back from the dead is here to do the synopsis aren't you david take it away 16 year old sarah is given 13 hours to solve a labyrinth and rescue her baby brother toby when her wish for him to be taken i'm almost singing it Away is granted by the Goblin King Jareth. Oh, it's too hard to try and you. do that. And, uh, Thank yeah. you, David. Yeah, <laughs> and let's just let's just bow, bow our heads, rest in peace to the, the great David Bowie. Fucking absolute legend, uh, and absolute and, artist, and an absolute legend and artist that was Jim Henson. And I must say, him? he doesn't. We do need to address him and how incredible that guy was as well. And the imagination that Jim Henson and the, the childhood that he wrote for a lot of people, mm. whether it's Sesame Street, the Muppets, mm. Star Wars, you know, he did all, puppets all across the, you know, so c- combine Bowie and him, Henson. Whew. Well, earlier when I went, phenomena, do, 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 and I was obviously doing from the Muppets, and I was like, it's a nice yeah. little bridge. I thought there we I didn't, didn't drop in. Yeah, yeah, totally. And David Bowie, uh, like, let's chat about him. It's probably not many times we're going to be chatting about him. We did do that vampire movie with him in, didn't we? No. Didn't we? Did we not cover that? No, we've talked about doing it, The Hunger, but um, oh, might still do it. In my point. head, we'd cover that movie. Okay. Um, David Bowie, what can you say about him? Like, the musical styles of just really varied but in his he did his such his own little unique cool fucking thing he's he just was, not uh, in the normal he, he is a pop star at the same time though he was the pop star who would fucking go and read about fucking the dark side of life and just go to different places do you know what I mean he wasn't staying normal he isn't normal and I love he him, changed man. as soon as he became too big or popular he changed his image like that and it's like right I'm this now I'm Ziggy Stardust now and then he changed to something else. Then he changed, and he was doing what Lady Gaga and all these other artists are doing these days. He was doing all of that back then, you know. And he could never. He, he always the first Jeez, one to admit. Us. What a song, he, man! He was the first one to admit he wasn't a singer. He couldn't sing very well, but just, he had presence. He, he had, played guitar. It's just incredible. The guy was just off off his rocker, but also a really lovely guy. Yeah, loved his cocaine. And his son is an artist. Well, well, a he, direction, yeah, eh? but come on, he was he was the same as every other artist. You say he loves his cocaine, but it was that era. We're still back in that fucking era again, oh, as gosh, we yeah. were earlier, for both these films. Um, 
so the, the, I don't think it, the coke was such a thing going around. It was fairly normal, and, um, and people would have got into that anyway. But regardless of that, he's going to be someone who's taken hallucinogenics and gone to different places. Bowie was just such an artist. I, I fucking love him. I would have sex with David and, Bowie. I'm saying that right now. And of course, George Lucas uh, was involved in producing this as well. So we got another sort of. Yeah. Star Wars, the guy in this. And it's interesting, I and haven't seen this I, film. Go on. I was going to say, if I remember rightly, one of the writers was also a Monty Python uh, person, were they not? Uh, the, the writer, Terry, wasn't it Terry? Uh, Terry Pratchett? Uh, Terry Pratchett, Terry Jones, isn't it? Terry Jones, sorry. <laughs> uh, what were you going to say? You hadn't seen. Uh, yeah, yeah, Terry Jones. The screenplay is Terry Jones. The story was Jim Henson and Dennis Lee. Um, but yeah, Terry Jones did the screenplay. Um, no, I hadn't seen this film, but obviously I've seen clips, I've seen pictures, I've seen everything going in this movie a million times. I know this movie without having actually the scenes in front of me playing in order. You understand? Which is probably why you didn't ever feel the need to watch it, because you feel like you've seen it, because... You know, you remind me of the babe. What babe? Everybody knows that. Everybody knows this film from beginning to end. Yeah. Um, and and as a kid, it never uh, fantasy's never been my thing. Someone else said next day he's going to say he hasn't seen Dark Crystal. I've seen Dark Crystal maybe once. It was a bit darker because it had the name Dark in it. But honestly, I've f- for my whole life since a kid, I've had to go to like the really harder dark side of things, and this was too fantas- fantastical for me. It wasn't it wasn't horrific enough for me for whatever reason. The horror uh, is is just my thing and always has been. Um, and and, and it, let's put that out there. It, it now. came across as too pop. So many people liked it. All these other people liked it, and I was always like, "Nah, I'm not gonna watch it because you like it." But, you know, at the same time, I had something there. I was just like, no, if it's that popular, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's a bit stuck up to think like that sometimes. You should really go along with things which are popular because they're popular for a fucking reason, aren't they? You know. Well, let's, let's get this out of the way now. Clearly, this isn't a full-on horror. This is a fantasy, yeah. Jim Henson production. But I've chosen it because it's my birthday episode, and I've chosen it because it's a film look, that I know off by heart. Look, um, everybody... Loves this film. Most of you out there are going to say how much they fucking love it, and they're just going to be like, if you fucking, you know, we, we could probably lose listeners if I was to diss it. There's no <laughs> way I'm going to diss this movie. Again, I'm a 44 year old in 2021 coming into watching a, a fancy movie with all these things in David Bowie dressed like he is. But like, <laughs> like the set design and the animatronics and how it's put together and how it's made and this fantasy that is curated with this David Bowie in this costume singing these particular songs with these creatures behind singing it was like an episode of Muppets but been put on to a very creative artistic freedom uh, sense of freedom to it where they could really go there and I think Jim Henson probably Bowie probably sat for a long time discussing back and forth and really what this world that we're going to create with this and they absolutely utterly create this now I sent you a message saying I feel like I'm at Panto that wasn't uh, Panto was probably the wrong word to say more a play I wasn't dissing the movie but I felt like I was sitting back watching these scenes evolve and come to life and these creatures going along it felt like I was at a, a play sitting in an audience and, and not in any disrespectful way I was watching this crazy crazy thing and enjoying it but I enjoyed all that stuff but I but the storyline and all that sort of stuff is that's right I, I love the fact that I, I didn't realize it was about a maze it was so funny. Elijah I goes to me, really my six year old my six year old I went, Oh, it's amazing. Nice, I like mazes. And Elijah goes to me, looks at me with a face, he's six, and goes, It's called Labyrinth. And then looks back at his fucking tablet. I was like, Oh man. You know. <laughs> I feel terrible saying my six year old son's on a tablet, but fucking that's just the world we're in now. Um so, you know, I, I didn't realise it was a maze. And I was like, yeah, oh, I was amazed. No, so I like that stuff. I like the bit where there's the wall bit and she just walks through the wall because they've done yeah. it, you know. It is. 
I'm going to probably enjoy the movie more talking to you now and doing bad David Bowie impressions, though, when it comes down to it. And that's no dis- and I don't want to put any say to anybody, I'm coming at it as a negative motherfucker, which I always seem to be the good cop, bad cop. No, you're oh, not. I'm always you're the not. bad cop. I'm bad cop. Bad cop. M- M- McGav. Well, look, if you're going to do David Bowie impressions, then I'm going to be probably Bowie. be doing some of the creatures. <laughs> that's right, always been into fucking Charlie, Charlie, uh, Fickby Jiggy. Oh, yeah. Charlie. Um, not Charlie Manson. Oh, yeah. Do you know? That's, that's the jacking off. <laughs> Charles day. Bronson. Charles Bronson. I've got to make sure my Bowie doesn't go into my Bronson. Got to keep out Never the Bronson. Bowie in Bronson. Stay in the Bowie. Right. So this, obviously, you're going to, obviously, as we get through this, I'm going to, my passion for this film will come out. Absolutely. Um, but it really captures, captured and still captures my imagination. Um, what I love about it is there is a message underneath it, which is, you know, at some point you need to put down your toys and your childhood things and, and take a little bit of responsibility and grow up a little bit. Uh, and she learns that the hard way whether it's in her mind or whether she actually does go through the labyrinth. And there's also a lot of fun Easter eggs because the opening scene, we see a lot of books like The Wizard of Oz, Alice in Wonderland, lots of toys and things that all pop back up later on throughout the course of the film. It's an incredible film. And like you've just said, Gav, you know, as soon as we posted, we were watching this separately and that we were covering this. There's not one person on there who said, I hate that film. Everybody said, this is my favourite film of all time. This is in my top five. This is in my top three. It's it's insane how loved this film is. Absolutely. A very very loved cult film. And I'm sitting here looking at IMDb as I look at you also and chat to you. And looking at still images. And just this one shot of Jennifer Connelly, who I'd forgotten was in the film, um, uh, holding hands with the big big pointed bear Ludo. Ludo. Um, uh, shaking hands with Ludo, and and just the world that that creates, just so that that picture would make an incredible uh, uh, picture you could put on your wall, and never know anything more of that, just that one thing, and make a make a whole story up from just that. You see, it's 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 the eye, the vision put to it is it's incredible. It's it's an it's Jim amazing Henson. feat, and I think that shit is amazing. It the rest of the story in it and stuff, I'm like, eh, whatever. You know, um, but that's because I'm an old, yeah, uh, old, old dude now. And, and you know, who cares about the story? Let's be honest. No, who cares no, about the absolutely. story? The story is, the story is a bratty little girl who's asked to babysit her stepbrother. Doesn't want to do it. Wishes he would be taken away by the Goblin King. He is. She ends up regretting that decision and having to fight her way through a labyrinth to get him back so she doesn't disappoint her parents. It's a bit of a silly story. However, the good bits are that the fact that Jim Henson's imagination is just completely unleashed onto the screen. And you get these incredible characters and monsters and creatures. These set pieces, which, like you just said, are phenomenal. And then throw in the mix David Bowie with his giant cod piece. Sarah. I need to address the cod piece officially. Uh, well, I literally just about to say to you, this was incredibly what you're saying then. It is amazing to watch it on my projector screen. I'm quite fortunate, and there's going to be people out there who've probably not seen it. the size that I've seen it with surround sound. It's lovely, you know, like uh, on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, yeah, Bowie's uh, co- cock uh, shape was um, uh, on my projector screen, so I've never seen that. Da- I never realised on a Sunday afternoon, Davy. The shape of David Bowie's cock would be on my uh, wall. It's something to behold, isn't it? I wouldn't want to hold it. <laughs> well, I, earlier I said I'd have sex with the man. Um, I don't, it was just like, what on earth? Um, I, I think when I yeah. look at him and say, oh, I'd have sex with the man, it's just like the, the, the who he is as a style and the person and everything about David Bowie, he's such a mystical creature. And not really for the, the, the bulge of the penis. <laughs> That that is a hell of a bulge, and that is something that is quite often talked about, even from fans of this film. I, so I just I, wanted to address that with you. I talked in Bowie um, Labyrinth earlier, yeah, and on it, you know, you get like the search results, which are most popular and come up. At uh, least fifth one down said Bo, uh, Bowie Labyrinth bulge. Yep. I was like, wow, that's a top hit. Yep. Anyway, now there's another dark. This film could have gone down a dark turn, Gav, because at one point. Jim Henson and his team were toying with the idea, who who should we get in to 
do the songs in this film to be the oh, Goblin King. I, 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 Let's thought, get I was hoping Michael Bo- Jackson in. I was hoping Bowie was going to be the first choice, to be honest with you, because no. he makes he, it. He, he was one of the choices, definitely. But, okay. but at one point, Michael Jackson was really heavily okay. close to being cast. And can you imagine if the film about a boy, well, a no. man who steals children no. and takes them to the centre of a maze? The podcast on Horn Hill does Jackson. not does not completely believe if their hosts' uh, 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 thoughts and opinions. <laughs> no, I said, but you should record. <laughs> Disclaimer. Each that. time I just, just have a disclaimer button. button when Dan talks about Michael Jackson. Um, I'm stolen your baby. <laughs> d- d- listen, this is not a proven thing. You cannot say that. It is a thing we just have to leave alone. It is. You can't say it. There is no proof of that. There is people saying that stuff. I'm so, just saying, regardless, I, read it, but... I understand. No, let's talk about that properly, though. That uh, Michael Jackson can't really act for shit. No offense. Have you seen Thriller? It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's like he's not fucking yeah. winning an Oscar for fucking acting, that's for sure. Motherfucker could not do that, but he can dance on toes backwards, and he's pretty good at that <laughs> shit. He fucking can, you're right. He fucking can. Who else do you know who can dance on his toes going backwards? What, about, well? his acting, what about his acting in Moonwalker? Uh, I, I, man, uh, that's a film I think I've seen. I, I think I played the computer game more, and that was awful. It turns into a, a giant robot that transforms into a car. You remember that Fuck bit? No, and Joe dude. Pesci's going, I'm just trying to sell crack to the kids. Come on, man. I have no idea. I, you sound like you're making up that up. I have no idea. That is all true, my friend. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he can't act for shit, so no bollocks with Michael Jackson be there's no point with that. Is is he the only other uh, musician stroke uh, attempted actor uh, to be thought of? Um, I got a feeling Prince was was considered. Prince but Prince wouldn't really have done it. Talk, though, does he? I know he sings and that, but he's a very quiet sort of person. He's terrible, you know. He... Bowie brings this film the fantasy world it needed. He is the weird fucking creative creature outside it has just stepped in to be the Goblin King. The Goblin Michael King Jackson sounds like one of his... King. The, 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 the Goblin King right. sounds like one of his alter egos. You it, know, the, I've been... He, yeah. The, 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 you know, there's other people you could do, like uh, Alice Cooper. Oh, do, I'd like that. Um, yeah, no, there's other people out there that you could have possibly thought of, but yeah, Alice but, Cooper, right? yeah, but Bowie, Bowie's amazing, so you know. Well, let's let's kick things off, Gav. Let's kick things off. So, we start off with the first ever on screen piece of CGI. Oh, really? What, what was the, the first, first time shot? it was ever used? Was that the owl that you see flying around over the opening credits? It's the first ever CGI images on film. Uh, it, that looked pretty good, but to be fair, uh, because you've got uh, an, a complete uh, prosthetic artist directing the film, as in Jim Henson, you'd like to think that if he's going to put any CGI or if that's going to be in the movie, it's going to be done well and definitely will. And that's probably the help of George Lucas. What did George Lucas do? Was he producing? Producer. And that's that's, that's George Lucas' input. So you've got basically George Lucas and Jim Henson and the vision they could do. Imagine if they did go into the more horror world or something. Well, I guess they did with Dark Crystal. Okay. They, so, they, they they were together on that then? Yeah. Right. It's a shame Bowie wasn't on that, or was he? I don't know. No. Who who was in, in Dark Crystal? Was any, um... It was all puppets. Oh, really? Yeah. But very dark. Yeah, this... Uh, I mem- Actually, I remember that's some really weird birds in it, isn't it? Mm. Mm. They like, do that all the time. You sound like Scooby-Doo. The Skeksis, they're called. scooby mm. Doe. Now, let's get on with it. So we cut. We first meet Sarah. Sarah is our hero. Sarah. She, she is practicing a play. She's got a little book with lines in it, a script, where she meets the Goblin King and she says, "You have no power over me." She, she's got a dog called Merlin. This is a girl, a sixteen-year-old girl, who cannot give up being a child. She wants to stay as a child forever. She loves her fantasy elements, and she's out having a great time on this little bridge. Suddenly. Rain sets off and she realises she's late to babysit for her stepbrother. 
Her father's recently married. She gets home. She, we meet the stepmother. In a massive, she, massive house in there, isn't it? Yeah, massive house. I, I, I had this today. Earlier, I, I just, this morning, I was working in a house which um, I think was three and a half million pounds. Oof. And I was just looking around the house. So I'm just letting by the cleaning. I'm wandering around. I'm going to see what work I'm going to do and stuff. And I'm just looking around this house. And I was just wandering around this house. And it just kept going and going. And then there'd be another corridor. And it would go and go. And right at the end, there'd be another door which goes into another door. And it just kept going and going. And I was like, I need my sat nav for this house. And it was such a waste of space. <laughs> it's such a waste of money and space. What's the fucking point? You know. And I thought that when I was watching this movie, this big old house, it's that sort of thing. And it's quite funny. That it seems a bit odd, really. Then, like, they've got her. Then all of a sudden they've had another child. So they've got a baby, which is about a year old or so, isn't it? Obviously, the baby which is going to come into this, which I thought was the baby from Ghostbusters 2. It's not, is it? No, it's not, no. Okay. Well, Sarah's such a brat because she gets home and her parents are going out for dinner. Well, her dad and her stepmom. And... She's really against babysitting. And they're like, come on, look, if you had plans, you should have told us. Do you have plans? And she's like, no, I don't have plans, but you should have asked me. And her stepmom says, well, I really like it if you did have plans, you know, a date or something to get out of the house. She basically is saying you spend all your time in your bedroom with all your fantasy elements, all your teddy bears, all the things that you probably shouldn't be doing at your age. You should be growing up and going out on a date and doing stuff. But Sarah is being a brat. So she goes and locks herself in a room, gets all pissy. She looks at a picture of her dead mum uh, that she's got on her um, mirror. And then she hears her, par- her dad and her stepmom leave. She's annoyed. Then she hears Toby crying. Is it, at this point, I thought she was on speed. When she goes <laughs> into that, When she goes into that room and starts talking to that baby, fucking hell... She's yeah, so she like uh, uh, all over the place, or oh, she's coming on a coat come down. She is just fucking all over the shop. She, she's been out with Team Wolf on a on a coat binge, and she's a coat binge with the Team Wolf. I, I want to go on a coat binge with Team Wolf. <laughs> me, me and Michael J. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be you ringing up Monday morning saying, "Alice, Alice, I've hurt my legs. What'd you do? I was surfing on a van, <laughs> coked out my face." <laughs> <laughs> was Michael J. Fox driving again? Yes. Yeah, he eggs me to go faster. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get the coat from? David Bowie, the Goblin King at the centre of the labyrinth. You want cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> so she, go, she goes into Toby's room and she says, you're, you're a horrible little brat. Stop crying. What will make you stop crying? I know what will make you stop crying. If you don't stop crying, I'll say some magic words. And the baby carries on crying. She says, don't make me say the words. And then we cut to just these little goblins. Just sort of going, shh, listen, listen. I think she's going to say the magic words. And then it cuts back to her and she's, she says, uh, I wish, I wish. And then we got this little humour because we cut back to one of the goblins going, did she say it yet? And they're like, shut up, shut up. And eventually she says, I wish the Goblin King would come and take you away right now. And that is the fatal words that she says. See, because and at first I suddenly... thought, well, exactly. At first I thought she's been a bit of a twat here doing this. Like, come on, that's not very nice. But then again, she doesn't really believe the Goblin King's going to come. But where has she got this from? Where, where is this? Where is she? How does she know this? I guess it's like from her book that she's um, reading from or something. Okay. Or I think it's just coincidence that she says the exact words that will make him come because all of a sudden all these little creatures pop up and all in the corners of the room quite a scary moment she pulls the covers back toby's not there anymore the owl flies like the in witch. through the window i thought of the witch yeah, it's like the witch yeah that's what i thought of. yes the owl flies in through the window and it becomes david bowie i am david bowie <laughs> <laughs> he says to her look at my bulge <laughs> She says, what have you done? He said, I've done exactly what you've asked me to do. You asked me to take away the, your baby brother, and I've done it. And she says, oh, I'd like you to bring him back. And he says, it's not that easy, I'm afraid. He's at the centre of my labyrinth. And she says, oh, no, I, I really want him back now. And he says, well, I'm sorry, but in 13 hours, he's going to become a goblin. So I if you can get to the centre of the labyrinth. <laughs> it's a yeah, he crystal. Gives her, uh, a crystal ball. Nothing more. <laughs> but if you look at it this way, 
it'll show you your dreams. <laughs> so he says to her, all right, love, see you later. Good luck solving my uh, my labyrinth in the next 13 hours. Well, no, doesn't he say, turn back, Sarah. Turn back before it's too late. Before you become one of us forever. Ever. I'm David Bowie. Look at my bulge. So she runs down, and this is where we meet our first creature, and this is Hoggle. Hoggle the troll, I guess he is. And he is basically got like a squeezy gun with paras- like a parasite buster in it, and he's squirting fairies. And she says, oh, Is that here on the Wii? I thought he was having a piss. Pi- he's, he's pissing as well. That's yeah. the first thing she sees him doing. I thought that was quite amusing, actually. I, was quite, I quite enjoyed that. It gave me ooh, it a little bit re- rebellious of the movie. It starts off with him just having a piss, you know. There's a bit of swearing in this film later on as well, but we'll get into that. Hmm. So, yeah, she uh, she says, oh, hello, why are you killing these fairies? And he's like, well, because they bite and they're horrible little things. And she says, well, look, I'm trying to get into the labyrinth. And he says, hmm, why would you want to get into that place? And she says, well, my brother's in there. And he's like, ha. Okay, so he shows her the way. He presents her the entrance. Inside. He presents his entrance to her. And she walks in and we get those little eyeballs on little Rolls, stalks yeah. sort of following. Like, oh, as she walks by. And she's walking along and she thinks, well, this can't be that hard. Because she's arrogant. Arrogant little 16-year-old brat. I like the little worm So fella. she starts walking. Oh, well, yeah, she starts walking. Yeah, and she she realises she's not getting anywhere. No. So she sort of gets upset and kicks the wall a few times. And this is your mate. Hello. <laughs> and she says, did you just say hello? And he goes, no, I said hello, but that's close enough. I said hello. <laughs> and she says, oh, can you help me? I'm trying to find... And he says, no, nah, don't worry about that. Come inside, have a cup of tea. Come in the missus. missus. Have a cup of tea. <laughs> like, she can't fit in there, but he's still being so lovely to her. Yeah, and then she says, "Look, I'm really sorry. I need to get to the castle, and I don't know how to do it. There's no one. It's just not even a labyrinth. It's just one long room." And he's like, "There's an entrance right there, love. What are you talking about?" And she says, "Well, I can't see an entrance." He says, "Go over there and walk through the wall," which she does, Gav. Which you like that bit because that's like a good little optical illusion, that isn't it? I did. I dig that. And I was like, "Go on, make sure you go the other way." Because she went out of sight on the left, and you can see where the cut is because she goes past it. And I was like, "No, it's the other way." Yeah, it made my uh, French way. I have to have settled in my head my OCD. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now she could have solved the entire labyrinth at this point because she goes one way. And the reason she goes the other way is because the room goes wait, wait. And she says what? And he goes. Don't go that way. Never go that way. She goes, oh, thank you so much. You've been so helpful. Goes the other way. Then he says to himself, God, if she'd have gone that way, she'd ended up straight at the castle. Which is the way she needed to go, isn't it, Gav? It is indeed. So silly. So there we go. That's the first little bit there. Uh, Now we get our first song. Now, I (laughs) know there's all the kids in that. And I could literally just go start, even though I don't really know it, or yeah, it's what it is, I start singing it now. I know everybody's listening is going to start going, babe, man, babe, magic, babe. <laughs> I don't know dance, the words. Magic, dance, dance, magic, 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 dance. Magic, jump. So, yeah, so we get, yeah, so it's like, hey, I'm here, I'm David Bowie, and my bulge is here. So David Bowie's well, over he's his bulge. Of, he's, uh, he's got... Toby on his lap and he sort of says you know if your sister can't get here in 12 hours that's all she's got left then you're going to be mine and then he says you remind me of the babe what babe the babe with the power you remind me of the babe and we get this incredible dance routine now with what at the time who's the may babe still be, um I don't, who knows this is just a song it so doesn't matter the baby reminds him of the babe yeah is that another baby I don't know you remind me of another baby. <laughs> really? Yeah, all babies look alike to me. Oh, all right, David okay. Bowie. Let's not sing. You baby racist. So, 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 I don't know about Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's just, I don't see Michael Jackson doing it. No, I don't you see him doing it. remind me of the babe. <laughs> I can't sing like Michael Jackson. Um, now, this scene at the time, and, I, and it may still hold the record, at the time this film was seen, held the record, the Guinness record, I think it might have been, for the most... Um, puppets 
in one scene. Wow. Because is, is each one by like uh, one person? Every single one has got one person so, underneath so the set. Right underneath the set is like a bloody mass orgy. Like 50 people under the set. <laughs> of just no arms about, just them just moving their bodies in advance of each just other. Just going, babe with the power. And saying things like, uh, and he's sort of, and it's just, and, but David Bowie, you've got David Bowie wandering around in between them all while it's happening. Look at my bulge. He, he must have been a bit high when he filmed this scene. I mean, I would have had to have been. It, it must have been insane. David Bowie didn't need drugs to be high. He was naturally just high. He was a star man. Yeah. Star Absolutely. man. <laughs> There's a great bit that always used to make me take my breath away as a kid towards the end where he throws Toby up in there and just turns around and walks off. And one of the, one of the other goblins catches the baby. Obviously, it was a dummy, but it always took my breath away a little bit when he t- that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, there's one bit though when he's got the baby and he does throw up and stuff. Like Michael Jackson could have done that shit. Do you remember when he held his baby? Buttons. What's his baby called? It's not buttons. What it's blanket. It? Blanket. <laughs> I thought it's buttons. Blanky. I don't know. Blinky blinders. <laughs> um. What's so what's what's uh, what's uh, Bowie gonna do with the baby? What's his plan? You his plan is mine. What's to do what with? Yeah, he'll he'll become a goblin in thirteen hours if Sarah can't oh, rescue him. Like, this is how he collects like, goblins. So, so he started off with no goblins once. And then he stole a baby and it turned into a goblin. And he thought, oh, this is good. If I steal did babies... Did he know to do that? The goblin probably. king? Probably. He's or a goblin when king. When did he turn into the goblin king? Or was it passed down to him? I reckon he was bitten by a goblin at midnight. What? When he's younger? <laughs> how, many, how, many long, how many years has it taken to acquire those goblins? And what do a they, long time. And where do they all live? Or are they like a in like the, in, travelling circus? In the Goblin Castle. They just live in the Goblin Castle. Do they, have they all got yeah. their own bedrooms or what goes on? Probably. I reckon they will form a bed for Bowie to sit on with his big bulge. For Goblin Bed. The Goblin Bulge. So, meanwhile this is happening, Sarah meets her first obstacle, which is the Upside Down Guards. So... We got these guards, these shields, two oh, yeah. shields. And there's and there's a head above and below each one of them, and she mm. says, "It's a bit Alice oh, in Wonderland, yeah. isn't it?" Well, that's one of the books that she's obsessed with from her bedroom. This 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 so, movie is basically Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, there's a lot of elements of that in it. Okay, yeah. So she says to these doors, "You know, how do I know which door I go through?" And he says, "Well, you have to ask us a question." Um. And one of us always tells the truth, and one of us always tells the lie. So she trying to she thinks she can figure it out. She says, Okay, would he tell me which this is the right door? She basically asks him a ridiculous question, and the other door says no, yes. She says, Great, I'm so smart, I've really figured this out. She walks through and she immediately falls through a hole in the ground. I love this bit though. Is is this like We're a, helping is this, hands. Is this like a mass mass uh, uh, amount of glory holes where just loads of people on the other side have got their arms sticking from? Who are you? We're helping hands. Is that what it is? It's it's all just people's hands, isn't it? So, yeah, it's like, it's, and it's incredible. insane. And they, she says, well, "How do I get out of here?" And somebody says, "Tell me which way you want to go." And somebody says, "Up or down." Oh, yeah, but the hands form together and make a face. They I see. actually didn't like that. I thought, do one face, then stop doing the faces because I wanted to see the hands. But that's the darker side of me, because I thought that was really creepy. Well, the weird thing is, she says, well, since I'm already pointed down, I guess I'll choose down. And they go, she chose down. And then she says, as, she, as they drop her, she says, was that wrong? And you hear one of the voices go, too, too late, late now. now. <laughs> it's so dark. And she ends up in the oubliette. Bowie. Which is a little dungeon. I'm David Bowie, the Goblin King. Uh, he, he He's not happy that she's getting as far as she is. Oh, why is she in the oubliette? Yeah, she shouldn't have got that far. So does he, will... this this is referring to other people do this and they don't get that far. What happens to them when they don't get that far? And who are they? They may end up as creatures or... I don't know. Mm-hmm. Who knows? And they would just be other people who have come searching for their baby. Basically, Bowie's a bit of an arsehole. He is. He's the Goblin King, Gab. He's evil. What a wanker. So he sends Hoggle into the oubliette. So Hoggle turns up and he says, uh, she says, where am I? And he says, you're in an oubliette. And she said, oh, okay. And he says, don't act like you know what that means. You don't know what an oubliette is. And she said, well, what is it? He said, basically, it's a place they put people to forget about them. 
but he says, I'm going to show you the way out of here. Um, so he opens this, he lifts this bit of wood up, puts it against the wall, and it turns into a cupboard. And he says, oh, it's the wrong door. So he shuts it again, opens it again, and it's an exit. And he says, this this is the way to get out of here, all the way back to the beginning of the labyrinth. She says, well, no, I don't want to go back to the beginning of the labyrinth. I, I need to solve it. So he takes her out through some tunnels, and we get these huge faces of rocks saying, mm. stop, turn about, turn around, go back, do not follow this path. And he walks past one of them, who's quite a northern from the north of England, lad. Because as he walks past it, he says, Beware for the path that you take. And Hoggle says, Oh, shut up. And he says, Oh, please. I haven't been able to say it for such a long time. Mm-hmm. And Hoggle says, Go on then. He says, Oh, thank you very much. So he says, um, More of a Yorkshireman, eh? More of a Yorkshireman. Uh, all of a sudden, though, a crystal ball starts rolling along the ground. And uh, it lands in the little the pot of this little begging creature who jumps up and it's actually the Goblin King disguised. Oh, it's me. Look at my bulge. Brilliant. And he says uh, to Sarah, how are you finding my labyrinth? And she says, she makes a mistake. She's arrogant. She says, huh, it's a piece of cake. And Hoggle immediately is like, oh, why did you say that? And he says, well, if you think it's a piece of cake, let's see how you like this little slice. <laughs> and he throws his little crystal ball and it turns into this machine with loads of knives and spinning blades on it that just starts firing down the corridor at her and Hoggle. Um, yeah, I do like this. This, I do is, like... this has gone all very total recall. You know, or phantasm, hasn't it? Really, yeah. it's just like what? The oh fuck? yeah, it's a bit phantasm. It's, actually. it's a bit of a cunt move on Bowie's heart behalf. I'm going to say here. I like the fact that he never gets Hoggle's name right. He always calls him Hoghead or Hogwart. He's always like, "And listen, Hogwart," and they always correct him like Hoggle. Mm. He's like, "Sorry, Hoghead." Mm. But yes, yeah, so this this machine is actually called the Cleaners because Hoggle says, "Oh no, it's the Cleaners." It's basically the drill out total recall. But it's got two little little people like, behind it, mechanical yeah, ones. Uh... Like two little leprechauns <laughs> sort of winding it. Yeah, winding it up as they go along. And um, so Hoggle and Sarah managed to break through a, a bit of wood. Push through a wall, yeah. Climb up a ladder. And they come out of a... See, uh... at this point, though, I don't trust this little fucker. Well, no. That Sarah's with. I'm like, I don't trust him. Absolutely. But, but as he says later on, what choice you got? But then again, I was thinking, well, I've got loads of choice. So let's fucking go this way and won't go with you. That's my choice. Well, she knows she can't really trust him, but also he's the only one that seems to know his way around this place. So mm. they climb out of this pot, and this is where we meet what I like to call Birdhead. When they're climbing out, um, there's a very quick shot, um, because I watched it on the old projector, I can see it quite big, there's a very short uh, David Bowie's face, which Correct. again we see later on. Oh, okay, cool. Was um, I saw it very, very quickly. I saw a little flash. There are about four Bowie faces hidden in various Bowie. rocks and trees okay. throughout this film. Oh, okay. I only saw that Me- one, Meaning, he's always watching. Yes. Always. So, yeah, we meet Birdhead now. So Birdhead is basically an old man who's got a hat with a big bird head on it, and it talks as well as the old man. And they say to him, uh, can you find us the way out of here? And he says, well, if you want to find the way out, the way forward is quite often the way back. And Mm. uh, the bird's always sort of saying things like, oh, it's so stimulating being your head. That's when he falls asleep and he looks down, he's snoring. At one point, he's talking so much nonsense, the bird says, oh, do you have to listen to this crap? It's a little bit of a swear word in this. I like it. They're going to hedge maze. Hopefully, Jack Nicholson's not in there. And we get these little guys with little lizard chicken things on the end of their poles. That are sort of Tormenting a creature. They are. Who's upside down. We hear... This really loud sort of growl. It's a we fucking get monster from fucking Big Trouble Little China. Well, Alice said to me because she was watching this with me. And she loves this film as, as everybody does, apparently. Um, and she said, "God, he's really just so much like the um, uh, Where the Wild Things Are, isn't he?" Which is another book that Sarah loves, and it's in her collection in her room at the beginning. Mm. So all of these things are all spliced into this film. She's got a real love of fantasy. 
And yeah, he's very much like uh, the where the wild things are creature. Um, so we meet this guy, and let's talk about this puppetry, Gav, because this is a one. This is a is suit with some... two people in it. Oh, okay, that's how it's bulked out so much. Because I assumed one person's in it, but then like that, two people. Wow. How? So one one operates the well, hands. Yeah, I'm the other one it. operates it's like the face and the legs. Absolutely huge. So you have to do that. I can see actually how big the legs are. You can have one person at the back there with a tail on top, and the other person. Yeah, but that's just incredible it really is like you just don't see artistry like this do you can you can you think of anything like no, I know we've I'm, got motion capture I... image nowadays and we've got a lot of stop motion image um but this is like another another level isn't it well alice bless her she, she really made me proud she turned to me and said god these days that would just be cgi wouldn't it and she's right it would be so much easier and quicker to do that these days but actually, the the realism of, of Ludo in this film, you know, he, he blinks, his mouth moves, he looks around, he's got two hands, two legs, he, he turns his head. Because it's two people sweating inside that suit, making it look so real. Mm. It's insane. Mm. Just like Hoggle, you know, Hoggle is a, is a, a little person, a woman, in fact, played Hoggle. Um, and wore that mask that with the robot face on it and stuff. It's just they were really pushing their budget. Jim mm. Henson and his gang. Mm. It's incredible. Mm. So um, Ludo is very scary, but Sarah says, I can get you down. So he calls the rocks. So we find out Ludo has got uh, uh, t- like telep- telepathy with rocks. So the rocks roll over. She throws him at these creatures. They leave him alone. And she cuts him down. And he seems quite scary initially. But she says, oh, that's not very nice. I've tr- I've helped you. My name's Sarah. And he says, Ludo. And she says, oh, Ludo, I'm Sarah. Sarah, friend. Sarah. Ludo, down. So they're friends. They're, they're, they're okay. Hoggle was run away because he's a chicken shit. So Gav, you were right. Don't trust him. He's run off. No. Little bastard. Little twat. So, yes, yeah, she's rescued him. And they walk along together now. And they come across... The door knockers now, another obstacle. Mm. These guys are great. You can actually buy these door knockers. You wouldn't be surprised um, to find out, Gav. You can buy big metal versions of these that you can put on your door. Big so one of them's got the knockers. big metal knockers. Big metal what? knockers. That's on um, Young Frankenstein, isn't it? What knockers? <laughs> I love she Young says, Frankenstein. Thank you. <laughs> I need to watch that again. It's so fun. I watched it for my 31 it's so good yeah um, I can't wait for October again ooh 31 and 31 exciting times you're, um, you're uh, not going to be doing the 31 and 31 you'll be doing a, I did half a movie we'll see <laughs> no, you we'll know, see you never know you never know yeah. but yes so she comes across these knockers and one of them's got got the sort of door knocker in his mouth and the other one has got it in his ears so that means he's deaf and the other one can't talk so she she like removes one of the other knockers. week exactly that. like you and i we should be these door knockers i think we would make <laughs> fantastic door knockers i never knew that i'd find someone who i could have be as a partner in door knockingism with you door, door knockingism <laughs> love it she says so that she takes the door knocker out of the guy's mouth and uh, she says, what's going on here then? What do I have to do? And he said, well, uh, knock and the door will open. That's all you need to do. And she's like, which door do I go through? And he says, well, I don't know. You just have to choose which door. And the other guy sort of going, I can't hear any of you. I'm deaf. She eventually puts the knocker back in his mouth, knocks the door. No, no. And goes through the door. And this is where Danny John Jules, a.k.a. the cat from Red Dwarf, is one of the main voices oh, of really? the Fireys. What's the Fiery? What's, what's that? We, the Fireys are these red furry creatures that we meet now who can detach their limbs and heads from themselves. I've got to find a picture of them so, so I can remind myself of them. So they sing a crazy song called Chill It Down With Fire. Oh, yeah, this weird bit. Let's Down With Fire. And what they can, what they demonstrate is that they can remove all their arms and legs and heads, and they're all sort of interchangeable, these crazy creatures. And they want Sarah to take off her head. They want her to become like them and be able to sort of remove parts of their body. 
her body and then she doesn't obviously she can't do that she doesn't want to do that so they sing their crazy ass song um which is a really weird song to be honest with you um yeah she manages well, to run off i wasn't um, into this scene uh i'll be honest with you it just felt a, just i don't know it's just don't know <laughs> Can't give you really much of a thought on it. It just didn't seem right. It didn't seem to sit well as the other scenes. Does that make sense? It just seems slightly out of it a little mean. bit. Still maybe because it's also contrast. pink. I don't know. Maybe it needed more of a colour color contrast. I don't know. But she runs off and Hoggle saves her with a rope. So what we don't know, what we what we didn't mention is that earlier on, Bowie did say to Hoggle, if she ever kisses you, I'll turn you into the prince. And uh, Hoggle says, y- you will? And he says, yes, Prince of the Land of Stench. <laughs> that, it doesn't seem because, like a great prospect, does it? That's because we know that we hear about this famous Bog of Eternal Stench, which we'll find out more the about bog later. Of eternal, uh, the thing is, I've heard of the Bog of Eternal Stench before. The Bog of Eternal Stench. Eternal st- here's my bow, Jumboey. Now, because she's so elated at being rescued from the fireies, she immediately kisses Hoggle, which means that they fall down a trapdoor, they slide down a tunnel, and they end up on the edge of a cliff over the bog of Eternal Stench, which is just a very farty pool of green water that makes lots of fart sounds. And It does, oh, and it just stinks. I reckon it stinks of sulphur. That's my guess. What do you think she it says, smells of? farts anus she says what is that and he said that's the bark of eternal stench if you put one foot in that you'll smell that way forever oh imagine that so they have to like kind of, kind of avoid stinky Dan, wouldn't you they have to avoid it so they they walk away they sort of walk along the side of the cliff um and they land and they land on and ludo and ludo ends up sort of bumping into them and he keeps saying oh smell bad <laughs> and they're like yeah we get it ludo it's the bog of return and she's like all right that's all he says for about the next five minutes smell bad and they're like yes it fucking no, rakes right be, here mate that'd be like what i'd be like <laughs> well they get to they see a bridge and they think well look that bridge takes us away from here let's let's go to that bridge out pops sir didymus I am Sir Didymus. You shall not pass this bridge without my permission. Is that a fox? That's him. And they say, well, hang on a minute. What do you mean? He's like, I, my job is to guard this bridge and not allow a single person to cross it, fair lady. And they're like, well, hang on a minute. Like, we just want to get across. So Ludo ends up having a bit of a fight with him. Ludo overpowers him because even though he's little, he's really springy, this little Sir Didymus fox. And he says, uh, I have never met a foe quite as formidable as you. Um, let us become brothers. And he's like, brothers? Okay. So they're like buddies but now. You kind of make a little team. It's kind of formed here. And you got uh, also, on a side note here, you got to give Jennifer Connelly a round of applause for acting alongside. Do you know what? Cap, we've not even fucking talked about it yet. We haven't. Alongside puppets. Um, she was in Phenomena mean? the year before this. Yeah, Dario Argento, which is, you know, quite interesting. To, it's a very interesting choice, and I'm really happy that she did that. It gave us such a thing as... Imagine like, it's being kind of like a Johnny Depp thing, by, a bit more versatility or something. Imagine being directed by Dario Argento when you're that young, and then the following year, Jim Henson's directing you. Yeah, yeah. Crazy career start, really. Absolutely, yeah, and and just just the fact that she's acting alongside puppets, you've got to remember, you know. So it's like the puppets' performance is always going to be good, spot on every time. So if anything, maybe that makes it easier. But it's just this is obviously, I guess, it's the same actor, though, isn't it? You just go off into that little that little character you are in that world that you're actually around with the camera see. So yeah, interesting though. For a film full of puppets, you know, she is phenomenal in this. She is very no, good. No, no. <laughs> She's really good in this. Um, uh, you know, she, she she does exactly what we want. She, she's a dick at the beginning. We don't like her very much. And now we're really behind her for this whole journey because we really wanted to get Toby back. And she's doing a, she's doing an Alice in Wonder, um, a Wizard of Oz right now. That's another book that she loved. She's gathering a little gang, like you've just said. She's getting a gang of odd, oddballs, mm. you know, 
Uh, Dorothy had the lion, the, 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 the um, I was going to say the lion, the witch in the wardrobe, but she didn't have any of them. No. She had the lion, the scarecrow, and the tin man. So they say to Sir Didymus at this point, you know, you're going to need to let, let us pass. And he says, oh, okay, I suppose I can. My oath was to protect the bridge, but if I give someone the permission, they can cross. So they start to cross, but the bridge collapses. Mm -hmm. And they all start to fall into the back of Eternal Stand. Luckily, some stones appear, though. Because Ludo calls the rocks. And he calls them, and they appear. So that's good. They cross over the bridge. And... We get to meet Ambrosius, the dog, as well, who looks exactly like Sarah's dog, Merlin. So this is all her imagination, perhaps. Who knows? Now, as they cross over, uh, Hoggle remembers he was given a peach earlier, a poisonous peach, by the Goblin King, who was told, give Sarah this peach, this present. This is my crutch. Is, is that what he keeps down there? A peach? A rotten peach? There's a rotten peach in my crotch. So she takes a bite of it, but then she realises it's poisoned. Because she floats off into a fantasy land. Mm -hmm. Kind of Alice now, this is the scene, style, isn't it? This is the scene I used to fast forward through. <laughs> if I was... I, 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 here comes not... your secrets, your dark secrets. No, only when I was younger and more sort of that I didn't appreciate it I just think I just get on I don't need this bit but this scene now this has the, a lot going the, on the Bowie ball blower scene yes the Bowie ball blower <laughs> so she's inside one of his balls in this scene special <laughs> crystal ball and there's a ballroom scene and everybody wearing these creepy fucking masks yeah did it's nothing, pretty it out did there. nothing for me but I guess the context here is a child, so Sarah being 16 year old, wanting to be a grown up, and she's at this grown up party. She's being seduced by a grown up, or a grown up's pursuing her. She's trying to be involved. She really wants to be involved, but at the end of the day, she doesn't get anything that's going on. People seem to be laughing about her, laughing at her. She doesn't understand. There's all these crazy, creepy masks. It's genuinely quite a creepy scene, and she ends up picking up a chair. And this really reminds me of a lot of my dreams I've had where you break out of a dream, mm. where you jump off of something to get out of a dream. I don't know if you've ever had a dream like that. Yeah. And she, she smashes a, a chair against the side and it floats and she wakes up and lands in a rubbish tip. And this is where she meets the hoarding lady. Yeah. She's got a big pile of crap on her back. Not actual crap, like junk. And she says to Sarah... Come with me, I'll show you the way. And she, she opens this little door and it takes Sarah back into her bedroom. Was it all a dream? Has she woken up? Oh, Lancelot, my teddy bear, Lancelot. And then suddenly she opens the door and the hoarding lady's still there. And she says, she basically says to her, you never ever need to leave this room. Everything you care about is right here in this room. Here's your pencil box. Here's your panda. Oh, your panda slippers. You never wanted to throw your panda slippers away. And she talks about the dangers of hoarding and how, you know, you want to keep everything from your child because you're scared to let everything go because, oh, I mustn't ever forget anything. Oh. And she starts loading it all up on Sarah's back, just like she is one of these hoarding creatures. Hmm. Sarah realizes what's happening smashes the mirror which makes the wall start collapsing and we hear Sarah coming from outside and it's Ludo and Hoggle and Sir Didymus and they're outside so she manages to crawl her way out of this pit of rubbish and junk and they pull her up and uh, they say look where we are we're at the entrance to the Goblin City fantastic stuff yeah Oh, what an adventurous one so far, Gav. Unfortunately, we're about to meet a giant robot thing with an axe. That's pretty cool, isn't it? It's, yeah. Cool. Who goes there? And I like the fact it's just some little thing in his head. Can control <laughs> it. Yeah, and Hoggle tries to control it. He pulls it out and he tries to control it and he can't. And uh, he ends up like swinging the axe around. It gets stuck in the wall. Um, and then it sort of malfunctions and he jumps out and it blows up and that's it they're all kind of friends again Hoggle seems to be on the side I still don't trust him though Gav 
even though he's back and he's just saved them. I still don't trust Hoggle. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. So they enter the city and it seems empty. But all of a sudden the goblin army show up. And we get a gigantic battle. Goblins everywhere. So Didymus riding up and down on the back of the dog. Climbing <laughs> Climbing in and out of houses. I wouldn't ride a dog. Yeah. yeah. I saw a dog in the park the other day that I could, I could have ridden. It was so big. Hmm. It was it was walking along. So it was a really hot day, and it was walking so slowly behind its owners, to the point that they turned around and they were going, "Come on, come on!" And he looked at them, and he stopped walking, and he just led down on the grass. <laughs> I love dogs. <laughs> Me and Alice were laughing. We were like, he doesn't want to go anywhere. And then we went up to him and they were, they spent about 10 minutes trying to get him to walk. And he just was like, oh, fuck this, I'm some, lying some here. Some dogs, like Beans, my dog, sometimes like, come on, let's go for a walk. Come on, come on. And just stand on there for ages and he just won't go. You have to go, like, actually get him up and push him outside. It's like, why am I making you do this? You want, like, you love walking. Well, why, why am I having to push you? you know? I miss Beans. Yeah, you should come see him. You wouldn't miss his smells, so they're still the same. Has he still got the same farts? Yeah, yeah, he did one yesterday, and I was like, dude, I was trying to tidy Daisy's bed. The worst bit is when you you and I would be sat on your sofa, cosy, watching a film, like maybe one one or two of the kids, and Beans is led across us, fires going, and because he's so happy and relaxed, he just lets one out, and you don't even hear it. (laughs) You never hear them. You never hear them. And all of a sudden... Me and like Daisy, for example, would look at each other and go, "Beans!" At the same time, and then he just looks at you that face, like, "What did I do?" I know you can't hate him, can you? When he does that, no. Anyway, anyway, (laughs) dog fights. So yes, we get this huge battle, um, and we get Ludo calls the rocks again, and this time. A load of boulders come flying in. Oh, this is the second time we mentioned boulders. Hmm. So I was the boulder earlier. Hmm. You were the, the you were the, the pebble, pebble, and I'm the boulder. So the so the the boulders come flying in, and they take out all the the goblins. There's loads of funny gags. There's loads of good effects with boulders rolling around and squash squashing people. And they get to the castle, and Sarah says, "Wait here, because I've got to do this on my own." And Hoggle says, "Well, should you need us?" And they all said, yeah, if you need us, you know where we are. She goes in and she comes across like a MC Etcher picture with all the stairs going on all different directions. It's, it's a relativity, which she actually had a post of it in a uh, room. Exactly. So all of, the things, all of the things in her bedroom have come to pass now, whether it's in her head or whether she's, you know, just taking drugs. It's, it's incredible, off. like recreating basically that picture. That picture is such a fascinating picture to look at. I would, Gav, if I was you, um, there is a 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes at the most behind the scenes of The Labyrinth. Well, how they did it. It's on YouTube. That would be quite fascinating. It's amazing because the way they did these stairs, they actually had an actor walk upside down, a stuntman, Mm. who then was wired to turn around and flip up on the stairs. They show you how they did Ludo. It's incredible. Mm. Mm. Very short documentary. It's very incredible creative artist is artists at their, at their peak i'd say you know with this. well it's, it's pretty much 99 percent practical because cgi barely it was and incredible yeah and it will test a uh, test time forever because of the fact it is and the visuals here are so nightmarish because i've had again maybe this is why i love this film it taps into nightmares and dreams where my brother or sister was you know i'm trying to find them somewhere or i'm trying to find something in, in my dream and she keeps spotting Toby in different areas of this, like, stairs. She and she can't, can't him, quite can't get him. to him. Everywhere she goes down, then he's up. Then she goes up, she, he goes down. She can't get to him. And it, he's at one point, he's right on the edge of a really high drop. And she's worried he's going to crawl and fall off. In the end, she does what everyone does in their dreams. She jumps off and floats down past all these ruined steps. And she confronts Jareth the Goblin King. And he says to her, I turn back... Well, you can tell me what he says. I turn back the hands of time. I you. turn back the hands of time. He sings a little song to her. He says, that, I he change does. the stars for no one. <laughs> I can't live within you. He basically says to her, 
I've done so much for you, and all I ask for you in return is to love me, fear me, worship me. It's all a bit weird, but that's what he wants from her. And she remembers the line from the book at the beginning, which is, you have no power over me. And that is all she needs to say. Yeah. And uh, that does it. And it all kind of goes a bit wrong. Everything falls apart. She ends up back at home in her bedroom. She runs in. Toby's a sound asleep. Cute little baby. Sound asleep. She gives him her teddy bear Lancelot and says, he belongs to you now. So she's finally deciding to grow up and give away some of these things that she has. Okay. Her, her parents get home. Yeah. She hears them come home and that's nice and safe. But we do get a lovely cosy little blanket around our shoulders right at the end here because in the mirror she sees Hoggle and he says, but should you need us? And they all say, but should you need us? And she says, I need you sometimes for no reason at all. I just need all of you. And then someone says, well, why did you say so? And then they just have a massive party in her bedroom to David Bowie going, dance, magic dance. Whoa, dance, underground, magic dance. underground, why, underground. Um, why are they there? Because basically <clears throat> the point of this story is we all have to grow up, unfortunately, at some point. But that doesn't mean you can't come back to childhood things or childish things now and again. Because we need those things, much like, for example, me and He-Man or me in this film. Sometimes I just need to watch an episode of He-Man because it takes me back to a really happy, fun moment in my life where everything was so innocent. Same perhaps with you and Rambo or, or one of the films you would have watched. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It, it just takes you back and everybody needs that. So although it's good to grow up and start becoming an adult and not be a hoarder and hold on to all these childhood things... It's good to remember them, for sure. So sometimes you can have a party in your room with loads of puppets. Brilliant. Thank you. That's my uh, speech. That's your interpretation, birthday. your birthday speech. Well, I appreciate that. And, and, and you know, that's a good film. Um, in so Teen Wolf is about drugs, and this is about um, growing up. Growing up. Well, Teen Wolf is as well, I guess, in some ways. I suppose, yeah. I, like this movie it is what it is like uh, uh, I totally enjoyed the conversation with you and I appreciated all the stuff that I said um, which you cannot you couldn't watch this movie and say well that's a bit shit effects isn't it it's just, you can't do that unless you're a twat no definitely absolutely not um, you know and the story is what it is the Goblin King David Bowie's calling it there's a, there's a, there's a, I'm glad there wasn't any more songs to be fair I'm sorry for all lovers of the songs yeah you, no, like, you, I did yeah, think actually it's not my when, preference when uh, Babe the first Babe song came on I actually said to Alice oh shit I just realised that there's like two or three songs in this and Gav absolutely hates musicals and she went oh but it's not like a musical where they're sort no. of going so Alice made me pause it she was like you know that when in some songs some films where they're like I've got to do my shoelace up yeah, yeah. now and that like, everything that they do is a song it wasn't like that it was like literally three songs that were just random things it wasn't that bad I'm so glad I watched Sweeney Todd I was like what oh, the fuck is going that. on here um, yeah, so no, it wasn't too bad. But, and the downs, many days. The, 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 the kind of difference is you got David Bow, David Bowch, David Bowch, David Bowgey, uh, <laughs> dancing around, <laughs> dancing around with all those little fellas with his eighties uh, white female version of Tina Turner's hair. Yeah. It was just incredible for that. So you know, if I can, I give it a thumbs up for that. Who the fuck would I recommend this to? I have no fucking clue. Everybody's seen it anyway. Who can I yeah, recommend it to? Seen it. No one needs I'm the only one that hasn't it. seen it, anyway. So, but no, I don't hate it. Someone said, please don't say hate it. I don't hate it. You know, and what's great Thanks about Holly. it? Is, Thanks, Holly. It's so filled Thanks. out that this this world is so fleshed out because every inch of that labyrinth has got something happening in it. You know, there's a creature here, an eyeball there. You know, there's just something happening every single corner. It's just, it's just Jim Henson just let loose mm. and that is you know David Bowie's incredible in it as is Jennifer Connelly but it's Jim Henson for me it's just his mind let loose it's incredible and it's it's a, 
on IMDb, I, it gets seven point four, which is quite high. I, I actually give it a ten, and I know wow. it's not. A ten, I know it's not a ten out of ten film because there definitely You've films got with the it. You've sentimental but, things with it. Yeah, it's just an incredible film for me. I, I know it off by heart, and it's up there for me with Princess Bride, The Burbs. You know, there's three or four films that I know every word to, and I can put them on and watch them in a loop for days if I wanted to and this is one of those three or four films definitely hmm. <clears throat> well I'm so, glad um, yeah I, I, I'm going to give it a seven as well because I'm going to uh, but but uh, it's not for the story now and I'm probably not going to watch it again to be honest with you um, but uh, I give it a seven for just the artistry I'm impressed and I'm, I'm not sort of I don't care <laughs> that you haven't seen it but I'm impressed that having three children that you've managed to avoid seeing it but I understand why you haven't and that's because you've seen so many clips of it here and there you've probably I watched it in its entirety it. in pieces yeah, no yeah. I mean I mean, I don't mean you've um, yeah, gone that, out if it's in the living room I've walked out yeah yeah, I just mean you ha- you haven't seen it, but that's probably because you have actually seen it in about a hundred pieces over the last ten I years. I didn't need to hunt it. I didn't need to search it out. There's no point. And, that, and if you hadn't asked to watch it on this, I wouldn't have ever seen it. So, well, I'm glad I've done that for you, Gav. You've wasted ninety minutes of my fucking life. <laughs> so, I'm for joking. your birthday this year, for your birthday 2021, I've only got one choice so did, far. We did oh, Charles Bronson. Sorry, and... I'll be next. Yeah. We did Charles Bronson and Clint Eastwood. Um, Clint Eastwood, and I did David Bowie and Michael J. Fox. This is brilliant year for birthdays, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to bring some joy to the world, haven't we? And on that yeah. note, let's bring some weirdness to the world, because I can see a really pissed off, grumpy, grumpy motherfucker sitting over there. Can you see him? Hey! Yeah. Are you, Aiden? You all right? Yeah, OK. Are you ready Thank for you. it? Mr. Can Murray, you ready? I, yeah, I know about the new Ghostbusters movie. You keep oh, telling look. us. Yeah. Did you put any mixer with this? Bill? Is he just on a bad drink mixer? He's just giving me a straight rum, but there's yeah. nothing in it. Do other you know than he rum. was telling me? Don't, you? don't let him know. Don't let him. Can he see? Is he watching? Is it because it's my birthday? No, he told me that there's going to be a cocktail remake in that Tom Cruise one, and he's going to go for the job. Just, oh, I'd like to see that, Bill. I don't think it's going to work. He doesn't but know Bill, what you're talking about. It's time to say what you always say on every episode, Bill. Come on. Bill? Bill. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. World of the Strange, Sarah. World of the Strange, Sarah. Look at my balls in my hand. Well... Thank you, Bill, for that, and thank you, Gav, for your David Bowie. In, or David Bowie, is it Bowie or Bowie? It's Bowie. Brilliant. Well, talking of David, the Starman. Funnily enough, this World of the Strange segment is all about the legend himself, David Bowie, David Bowie, David Bowie. You're joking! Yeah. Ah. Let's dance. Let's dance under pressure. He's so good, though, isn't he? He's brilliant. It's fucking brilliant. So I've put together just a random. What did the eyes do without under pressure? Which would have been able to do it. Vanilla eyes would not be around, would he? Absolutely. No. He wouldn't have Vanilla Ice's landscaping program if it wasn't for David Bowie. That is an incredible thing you've just said. There. <laughs> it's true, though. It is. That's why it's incredible. You never knew that. When I was sitting there going, I quite like Vanilla Ice doing a landscaping program. <laughs> I only watched one episode and I quite enjoyed it. I watched it. a few episodes of it. Um, uh, the other day it was on and, on something and I was watching it thinking, I see what Gav means. He's quite charismatic. He kind of really, he's really into, for, into what he... For doing that, yeah, totally. And if it wasn't for David David Bowie um, being under pressure, um, uh, we wouldn't have that. Ding, 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 ding. Isn't that weird? It is weird. Very weird. Under pressure. So, I put together a scrapbook, a random selection of weird facts and weird stories and anecdotes about the legend that is Ziggy Stardust, David Bowie. No. David Bowie. And I'm pretty sure, because I know the dude, um, I know the son of the bass player from uh, Queen, um, I'm pretty sure uh, his uh, dad came up with the bass line as well. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Which is quite weird. I went to college room. Strange. 
Mm. Well, first one on this list is he came up with a a, a group, a charity. You know, like you've got the RSPCA over here, the Royal Prote Protection, Royal Prevention. No, the Royal Society for the Protection of Cruelty to Animals. Very good. So he came up with, Bowie came up with this one, the SPCLHM, which was the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Long-Haired Men. What? The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty I to Long-Haired Men. Why? What, what's going on? Because <laughs> men, men with long hair in the mid seventies, early to mid seventies, were really finding being it hard told to get to cut, jobs. Being told cut to cut your their hair. hair. Yep. So it was a, a stand against them cutting their hair. Yep. I love Bowie. He once said in a London paper in the mid seventies, "Anyone who has the courage to wear their <laughs> hair down to his shoulders has to go through hell." It's time we united and stood up for our curls. Amazing. Have you ever heard about him hiding his piss from a wizard? Uh, possibly. Let's get into this right now. So Ziggy Stardust, um, he, he was obsessed with that. He said, off stage, I'm a robot. On stage, I achieve emotion. And basically, he was worried... He kept his urine in a refrigerator, and somebody asked him why, and he's, all he said was, if a wizard was to steal this urine, they could use it to enchant me. So he kept it because he wanted the wizard to take it? No, no. He, he didn't. He bottled up his weed, enabling someone to be able to take it so they won't take it. I don't know why he did what he did. It sounds like David Bowie. David, but this is my way, so a wizard will not take it from me. Let's do some normal facts, just a couple of random facts. Obviously, his son, David Jones. Um, Duncan sorry, David Jones. Jones. Duncan Jones. Good director. Directed, yeah, great director. Source Moon. code. Yeah. Source code, yeah. Good, some good stuff. Um, and he chose the name Did he do Bowie. War, Warcraft movie as well? Might have done that one actually. Was that was right. That. I never saw it. He did name himself David Bowie for a couple of reasons. Firstly, there was already a Davy Jones because his real name is obviously David Jones. Well, from the monkeys. And there was already Davy Jones from the monkeys. Hey, hey, with the monkeys. And the monkeys is a hilarious uh, thing. The monkeys were just basically a, a one for a skit almost. A guy, uh, an exec, was just like, let's just do a piss take of the Beatles. We call it monkeys. Literally does like a, almost a joke, and it formed what it came watch, into. But that's what I it came into. I used to watch into. the TV show all the time when I was younger. Yeah, it was always yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Fucking loved Fucking it. Hugely popular. But it was literally as a joke skit, piss take on the Beatles. Caught the monkeys, get four guys, just for a joke. So he, need, he needed to change his name, you see. So yeah. he chose Bowie because of the Bowie knife. And somebody said, but why the Bowie knife? And he said, because, like me, it cuts both ways. Ooh. I could be Stanley, Stanley knife. Stan Lee? Stan Lee. Nice. Coming up next on Marvel's Spider-Man, I'm Stan Lee. <laughs> Do your kids still call him Stan Lee? Uh, they've gone past that, but that was a so thing. funny. <laughs> so funny when they thought I was his so name confused. was just... I was like, are you calling him Stan Lee or Stan Lee? And it's just like, it's so confusing. And after a while, I was like, no, it's Stan Lee. <laughs> Lesson. In 2003, they just kept saying, "They just say, yeah, what Stanley think of it?'" <laughs> like, there's a stick called Stanley. In 2003, Queen Elizabeth was a little offended because Bowie refused and declined a knighthood. They said, "Why? Why wouldn't you want the knighthood?" And he said, "I honestly don't know what a knighthood is for," and that's all he would say. Yeah. Turn it down. Turned it down. I'm, I, I kind of agree with him. Oh, what great Sir Bo, Sir David Bowie. What's, what does that mean? What, what, what? what is it's, a it's, I guess it's it's being recognised as. But then again, Jimmy Savile was Sir Jimmy Savile, you know. Yeah. 
That's true. Sir Didymus from Labyrinth was Sir Didymus. I mean, I don't remember him getting knighted. Yeah, I'm just going to call myself Sir Gav. Sir Gav? Sir Dan right. and Sir Gav. I don't know if Sir mix -a -Lot was ever knighted. I don't remember him going no. to no. Buckingham Palace. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Well, I'm, mm -mm. I'm one that is going to knight you, Sir mix -a -Lot. That'd be amazing, though, if mix -a -Lot I'd love was to see him knighted there. Sir mix -a -Lot. He The Queen's just, just twerking. The Queen's just twerking next to him. Woohoo! I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. No, he had a phobia of tea. Being a British man as well. Right. Apparently, he would never talk about what it was, but he had a traumatic experience with a cup of tea at the age of five and said he would never drink a cup of tea other than green tea. Japanese green tea was the only tea he ever drank. He was scared of normal tea. That's British English tea. What on earth? It's not like it could have burnt him because then he'd, be, then he'd be pissed at coffee or anything which is hot liquid. So it can't be that. And if he can drink another tea, it's going to have to be... What on earth happened? What happened to Gaff? Let's make the film of what happened to Bowie in a tea. What are you doing? That cup of tea? No, don't do that to me. There's a star man. There's a cup of tea waiting for me. What happened to him? I love the fact that he's so mysterious. He's like, I'll never talk about what happened to me with that cup of tea. Uh, like, what was it then, David? It's, uh, tell, tell, tell us more, Dan, please. I want to know more. So, a lot of people think that he has two different coloured eyes. This is incorrect. Right. He actually has a permanently dilated pupil in one of his eyes. Which gives the illusion that his eyes are different colours, but actually one of them just has a giant pupil, oh, the other one isn't. Know that. Yeah. And, and this is because when he was very young, him and his best friend George Underwood had a fight over a girl, and George punched him in the face, which gave him a permanently dilated eye for the rest of his life. Wow. Thanks, George. He used to go out with Slash's mum. <laughs> I never expected that. Slash one day as a kid came outside and his mum was in the kitchen with David Bowie. Fucking hell. Imagine that. Yeah, nice that? to meet you, son. Keep playing that guitar. You might make something of yourself I like you. Yeah, I like you, son. I like you that long hair. I've got a little hair society back home where I come from. 13 hours and you'll become a goblin with me. <laughs> I name you now, Slash. <laughs> he has a spider named after him, Gav. Really? Yeah, they they found a spider, and it's got orange furry hair, just like Ziggy Stardust. So they called it the Heteropodo David Bowie. Oh, really? I'm sure my special lovely Sarah would know about this. Um, wow. He's got his own spider. Here's another fact for you, similar to that, but weirdly different. Mm. He ha he created his own internet service provider. Oh, what's it called? Bowie Net. Yes. <laughs> what do you know, why did you love that so much? Just because I thought I thought for a second when I said it, it's going to be something really boring and standard, and then you just said <laughs> Bowie Net. I'm like, yes, Bowie Net. That's what I wanted. So <laughs> he started his own internet service provider in 1998. Wow. It cost ten. Cost ten pounds a month. It came with twenty megabytes. He was on and it. It was mainly, then. it was mainly for people to create their own home pages. It didn't do a lot, and it actually only went out of service weirdly, considering what year we visited. In the time team, it went out of service in twenty twelve. So it lasted all that time. That's pretty good. That is mad, isn't it? Hello, this is Bowie Ned. What's your problem? <laughs> Do you, think, what, do you think he works in the call centre? Oh, he does every call. He probably goes out to service them too. I wouldn't be surprised. You wanted to turn up and David Bowie's out. Just there to say we'll service your box. <laughs> I've come to service your box, Sarah. I've come to service your box, Sarah. No, she was 16. I don't think that should happen. <laughs> um, he was once stalked by a pink bunny. So he says... 2004, North America. Everywhere he went, there was someone dressed in a pink bunny watching him. Even to the point where, on one of the flights he was on, 
there was a person dressed as a pink bunny on his flight. Amazing. He never got never got to the bottom of that. I bet he liked Donny Darko. You can imagine him being a right fan of Donny Darko. He probably did the voice of Frank. Donny, you must control the end of the world, Donny. <laughs> my my Bowie is rubbish compared to yours. What else did he do? Let's have a look. Uh, oh yes, there was another incident with his eye in Norway. In 2004, a fan threw a lollipop onto stage, but it actually stabbed him in the eye. Shit. It got stuck because they'd licked it. Oh. Stuck on his eye. And he had to get him over the crew to remove it. However, he went on with the concert because he's an absolute fucking hero. <laughs> Even with one eye covered in sticky lollipop spit. Wow. But he got pink eye. <laughs> As a teenagers, him and Elton John were best friends. No, oh, really. David Jones and Elton John, or Reginald Dwight, as he was back then, Elton. Imagine that. David and Reggie are hanging out together, playing their piano again. No one knew they would become David Bowie and Elton John. That's insane, isn't it? Hmm. It's mad. But yeah, they were very good friends at a young age. Um, they kind of inspired each other a little bit. They'd sometimes tell each other the songs that they were writing and get bits of, you know, do you like that? No, do you not? Oh, I like that. That's good. Crocodile Rock. Yeah, go for that one, Elton. Nice one, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, what else was there? Uh, oh, his brother. His brother was a major inspiration for his music. In 85, he had a half-brother called Terry who battled mental health issues. And he actually escaped from a mental hospital, his brother, and killed himself. Shit. And uh, this impacted David Bowie so much in his writing. Um, and he wrote songs called, I don't know these songs, All the Mad Men, Aladdin, Sane, and Jump, They Say. And they were all inspired by his, his half-brother who'd committed suicide after a battle with mental health. Mm. It's interesting. So there's lots of mad stuff. My favourite story, though, and uh, I'll finish with this one. You'll like this one, girls. Blondie, Debbie Harry. She was once at a party, or a gig with him, where they were both performing, and he'd run out of cocaine. And he was desperate. He couldn't go on stage, in fact. And she said, if you show me a dick, I'll give you my last line. And he said, all right, here it is. And she said, oh, fantastic. There's my cocaine. So he sniffed it up, went on stage and did his thing. I've just come off backstage yeah, I had to do a line and show my dick I almost got into old Charlie <laughs> to Bronson Harry. again then to Debbie Harry to, to Blondie <laughs> hey Blondie how's my dick how's the bulge the David Bulge what'd you think of that I just showed your dick to, David, to uh, Debbie Harry it's great isn't it yeah it's, it's, it's a fly in a wall I probably would have been just been like what's going on this is weird just imagine <laughs> going back to one of those backstage with all these people just look around you what's going on he also voiced a character on Spongebob Squarepants once Amazing. in 2000, 2007. I mean, what blows my mind, out of all of these facts, a lot of them I come to expect or I've heard of, but the one that blows my mind is still the internet service provider. That's the one I got most excited for. <clears throat> I can't believe he had a new ISP at one point. But that's Bowie it. Net. There yeah. are many more facts it's out there. And listen, listeners, if, if you're a fan of the man, which most people are, and you've got a fact that I haven't included, chuck it on the Facebook page. I'd love to know something weird and wonderful about this man that I don't already know. Tell everybody about it. What do you know about him? Did he have three testicles? Did he have six fingers on one of his hands? What was it? What was it about him? Was yeah. he actually a man? Oh, He's quite into the occult. He was? Hmm. And he was into sort of space and sort of the whole... It's, he he almost was a Scientologist, but like a cool guy, cool Scientologist, cool, do you know what I mean? A cool Tologist. Yeah, a cool Ontologist. Cool Ontologist. Right, let's get out of here for the outro. Bill? Bill? <laughs> Billy. Billy Bowie. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Careless Pets. Weird. Is the life for Mars? <laughs> well, that was my birthday, episode 112. Yep. 12 being good because uh, my birthday is the 12th of April, so that ties in quite nicely. And, and we covered. Oh, 
Oh, yes, it is. And we covered my favourite two, well, my two, first two VHS films I ever bought. VHS, that was Labyrinth with Bowie. Bowie. And Team Wolf with Mikey J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. <laughs> That's not how he talks, but I, I will take that. So that was great. I had a lot of fun. 85 and 86, two good years. Lots of cocaine and drugs. Lots of Jim Henson puppets. David Bowie's cock. All going on in these two films. I had a blast. Thank you for joining. And thank you, Gav, for getting into such a deep um, look into Teen Wolf and the potential homophobia ex- around that. I didn't expect that when you said let's do Teen Wolf. I didn't know I was going to have a, a conversation. I didn't know like that, that either. Yeah. didn't know that either. But if things get too serious, we've always got David Bowie's cock. So that's always good. My bones. Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> Just that. <sighs> Back of a turtle stitch. <laughs> well, look, what is coming up next? Let's have a chat about that. Let's have a chat about where we've been, what we're doing. So, episode 113, I'm lucky for some. Not for us, though, Gav, because we're covering a couple of sequels where we are going to be getting into some fucking serious shit here. Okay. We're looking at Halloween 2. Oh, yeah. And... A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Amazing. There's more homosexual undertones in that one. We can get into that again. I love that film. We love that film. There's lots going on. I can't wait uh, to watch those two. Um, So good. Yeah, Halloween 2, good movie. Mm. Better than Halloween 1, I've decided, over the last couple of years. I'm sorry to say it. I love it. Wow. That's just my opinion. I really, really, really love it. You're not talking about Rob Zombies, are you? I'm not talking about that piece of shit. No. Uh, So... Yes, that's 113. Halloween 2, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. So, that means episode 114. As discussed, we are going to be covering some... It's a very random pairing, but it's two sequels that we love. It's Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows, mm. and Predator 2. So we're doing another... Se- oh, we've got two sequel shows in the in the works. That is Predator true. Predator 2. Nice. Interesting film. Danny Glover, man. That is that. Bill... Um, Bill Paxton, is that in that? Yeah, we're going to have uh, quite interesting conversations with all of these films, really. Well, if you think we're going to have interesting conversations with those, Gav, episode 115 is a director special. It's been a while since we've done one. And we're doing our man, Quentin Tarantino. And we are covering nice. Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. The first two, possibly the best two, possibly the ones that will spark the most conversation I don't even know how we're going to get this under six hours with a conversation, even just around Pulp Fiction. Yeah, it's um, just uh, just chat about Tarantino and and just the uh, the 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 film club of ninety one or wherever it was or ninety ninety one, can't remember what it was. The Sundance of ninety one or wherever it was, and just all the people who came out of it, Robert Rodriguez as well, and all that sort of stuff, and those filmmakers, and just yeah, and Tarantino, just just uh, yeah, such an interesting conversation. So it'll be fun to do a Tarantino episode, a director episode, where normally, if you've not heard one of us do one of those before, we generally run through the back catalogue of what that director's done in very, very brief, you know, just this film, this year, is it any good, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we cover the two main films. It's quite hard to be brief with that, but yes, we're trying. Yeah. Well, you know, it's our show. We can be as long as we want with it, Gav. Mm. But yeah, that is episode 115. I'm really excited to rewatch Pulp Fiction. Um, I watched Reservoir Dogs again recently, and it well, whole, obviously holds up incredibly the well. The difference but... is, like, if you said to me, just watch Team Wolf, and it wasn't for the show, I'd just been there, cool, but no, it was a bit weird. The fact it says faggot, blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? I would have picked up on that. But reviewing it, we open up a discussion. Fucking hell, reviewing Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. Reviewing Pulp Fiction, the discussion that we can have with that. Amazing. Characters. Like, just, just everything. There's that world that he creates with that. And Reservoir Dogs as well. That's such an interesting film. Just to go, right, how can we make this cheaply? Let's do it placed after the robbery's taken place. Brilliant. I think Butch uh, in Pulp Fiction Bruce is my Willis. second favourite Bruce Willis character of all time and Ooh. it's his second best, second favourite um, performance I think he's incredible in that motherfucker <laughs> I love him in that so much Zed's dead baby Zed's dead so, I punch you in your pot belly that's what I do so good yeah, so it's random. really really good so yeah and just just, that, just just 
the fact that he's just him and Marcel as well as sees him runs him over then the guy comes out and they go into the shop and then they get they're about to get bummed so what the hell spiders got a couple of flies in the web here and that's the guy from the mask isn't it who steals the Ow, mask from Jim Carrey he's gutted <laughs> because you wouldn't have seen t- uh, 22 short stories about Springfield it's one of the Simpsons episodes they just do Pulp Fiction <laughs> Oh, shit. And Millhouse just goes into uh, goes into the shop and says, Dad, I need to have a pee. And just walks into the antique shop. And the guy says, Hey, we've got something going on here. And Millhouse puts <laughs> a, a, a Nolik's helmet over his head, just swings the ball around and just knocks him out. <laughs> you should watch that one at least for research. <laughs> Well, that sounds like that'll be a fun episode. So here we go, guys. We've got um, we've got some Predators. We've got some Blair Witch sequels. Freddy. We've got Michael. We've got some Quentin Tarantino. It's all going on over the next three episodes. So stick with us. We've got a lot of fun coming up. Um, I'll do the admin, and then we can do our usual goodbyes and thank yous. So um, as always, we are the podcast on Haunted Hill, a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Go and find out more about them on legionpodcast.com. Become a patron, support them. Um, I'll talk more about supporting us as well in a moment. You can email us directly um, if you go to the podcast on Haunted Hill at outlook.com. You can message Gav and I, um, suggestions, critiques. Um, don't send nudes. We've had a lot of those. Please don't send any more. You can send um, some. You can send some. <laughs> Are you really? That's so good. Anyway, um, you can find more about Legion and us, the podcast on Unzido, on Facebook. If you go to Legion Podcasts uh, on Facebook, they've got a page. It's fantastic. We all chat to each other, all the podcasters and all the listeners and followers and, and fans. Um, and if you go to our Facebook page, that's where we're most active. Um, again, we just chat to absolutely everybody. It's a little community, isn't it, Gav? A family that we built over the last eight years. Um, family. Very much enjoy it. Vin <laughs> Diesel. Family. What would I say? But why do you do the podcast, Vin? It's family. Nice. Thanks for that, Vin. Um, yes. So it's amazing. Come chat to us. Uh, you can private message us. You can talk nonsense. You can share trailers. We can just have fun. And that's on Facebook. Um, you can listen to us wherever you're listening to us right now. But we're also available on many um, podcast platforms. Spotify, on YouTube, Podknife, Podbean, Apple. Um, can I please put out a special request? We don't do this very often. But whatever platform you listen to us on, whether it's one or you've got a couple that you listen to, can I please request, if you like us, please leave us a review. Because we have got a few, but we're always looking for more reviews. It really helps us grow as a show. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, that'd be fantastic. Um, if you're on Twitter, then just go at Haunted Podcast. You can tweet us. And if you can jump on Instagram, um, we do post up occasionally on Instagram. And we're at the, pon- the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta. That's us. Um, We have Deadbolt Films as well, which is our production company. We currently have a comic and another comic currently being crowdfunded. And that's Abyssal Albion. Almost almost completed. So we've got two comics. We've got two podcasts. That's this one and Gab's other show, which is The High Strangers. Um, We also have a whole bunch of short films and a whole bunch of feature films on there and lots of other projects going on. Go check it out. That's deadboltfilms.com. We have a YouTube channel, Deadbolt Films. Just search that. You'll find that. You can always find it by just finding a video of Gab and I running around the graveyard with me shitting myself. We, we, Um, We need to do a new one. We do need to do another World of the Strange. Maybe we can be uh, people again. Deadbolt Films. Just type that in on Instagram. You'll find us. And if you want to tweet them, just at Deadbolt Films. That's us. And the final and one of the most important things is, as always, thank you to our patron Yay! supporters. You guys are legends. We love you very much. Thank you. You've all got your T-shirts now by the sound of it. Um, if you want to buy a T-shirt, by the way, yeah, before I get... And- and we have been selling them. I'm going to have to quickly say Blue Large is out of stock. Do apologise. Blue Large. Blue Large. <laughs> Mainly white now, guys. Mainly the white t-shirts left. And, but and there is some greys. It's fine. There's it? a couple of greys. And they're small, medium, large and extra large. Various sizes. But a couple of blues left, just not large. Go to deadboltfilms.com and go to the merch section. Buy a t-shirt. And we do have extra large. Unfortunately, not extra, extra, but we do have extra large. So you know. that's just because of the company that we use. It's no discrimination or anything. It's just literally the company that we, we use. We got what we could. Yeah. Um, so back to Patreon. Thank you as always to our Patreon supporters. If you guys want to become a Patreon supporter, go to Patreon. Type in the podcast on Haunted Hill. You can support us from as little as a pound, a dollar a month. 
uh, as much as you want. Basically, it helps us keep growing as a, a show, keep growing as a show. You can also support Legion, like I mentioned, our network. Mm -hmm. and we'd love you to do that. Gav and I both do that. And that helps us, us keep going again in the background. Um, but the, as always, we want to thank our Patreon supporters. And I'll name them all in, in voices. Voice? I'm going to do them in voices appropriate to different creatures from Labyrinth. Okay. I'll try my best with this. <clears throat> so thank you, as always, to... RJ McCready. <laughs> Let me out. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kate Pollock. Rachel Elizabeth. Mm, Sarah Kay. Kevin S5. Jerry Salmon. Jill Smith. Ooh, Matthew Godley. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us into my wonderful labyrinth of birthday Teen Puberty Wolves. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So on that note, Gav, I've really enjoyed this. Thank you very much. It's a good night from David Bowie's cock. Good, good night from my bulge. Sarah. Sarah. Well, you look at my testicles. It's bulging in I've your face. I stole your brother. Oh. He's at the center of my life. I'm David brand. Bowie, Bogey Bowie. Michael J. Fox is going through puberty. <laughs> His dad looks like Grey Bigfoot. I want to give him cuddles. There's a line which we didn't talk about actually in um, Team Wolf where, where he's itchy, Team Wolf, and he's itching himself and he says, Oh, I don't know why I'm so itchy. And then Styles turns up and says, "Hey, how you how you guys doing?" And he says, um, "Styles, do you know anything about a rash that's going around at school?" And Styles says, "No, but I did hear that Mr. Smith, the shop teacher, got his dick caught in a vacuum cleaner." Okay. And it's like this is a PG. I know. I don't know if my kids heard that, but like, what the fuck? Yeah. So it's a good night from uh, David Bowie's cock. Who you said it from? Yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking now about a scary movie. I told you, Mum, not to interrupt me when I'm cleaning my room. <laughs> cleaning my room. Well, in that case, it's a good night from Michael J. Fox. Mm, it's a good night from you. Birthday it's a good boy. night from Ziggy Stardust. Happy birthday, Dan. It's your birthday. Do enjoy it. I'd love a party where... David Bowie Jim turned Hen up. Jim Henson, David Bowie, and Michael J. Fox are all there. I thought you said Michael Jackson. No, not Michael Jackson. He's not invited to my pies. Make him stand in the corner. You've been naughty boy. <laughs> been a very bad boy. <laughs> well, listen, everybody. Come back and join us soon for episode 113. As you've heard, we've got loads of good episodes coming up. And uh, I yeah. think the next time we talk, I might even be a parent. We don't know. Who knows? Yeah, so see you in a few years, guys. <laughs> so speak to you in 2027. <laughs> Take it easy, people. Hope to hear, uh, see you soon. Speak to you a soon, listen thanks. to you soon, hear you soon. You can hear us too. That's another one. Special thanks to Bill Murray. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.